hello, 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 what's up this afternoon, everyone? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Fine Tuesday to y'all. Good to see you, good to see you, good to see you. Hey, Stone Rain, what's up? Good to see ya. Zelda's at Curl Frog, but can do pull. Aw, Ween, I'm so jealous. I'm so jealous. I really wanted to see Ween. Dylan Hunter, Dr. Shandor, Cy Roberts, or Sir Roberts. Uh, Erska, oh my god, one of Ventura. And Dylan Hunter, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. The hype train is running. Hey, what's up, Dog of Myth? Good to see ya. How is everyone doing? It feels like it's been forever since. Since we had a stream and I guess it's kind of been because we missed Thursday and then Monday so it's it's actually been a couple of days so I missed all you hopefully you've all been enjoying the spoilers for Innistrad Crimson Vow and oh this set looks so sweet this set I think it's a lot more powerful than Innistrad Midnight huh? it's looking more powerful I gotta say here's my little mini rant to start things off hey what's up uh Rebuta? how are you here's a here's my little mini rant Wizards needs to go back to doing more two set blocks I think that's what I realized from seeing this. Like, there's oh, there's so much cool stuff from this new set that's gonna support stuff from the last set. Like, maybe my favorite example is so much of the decay stuff that we are like kind of mocking a little bit during Innistrad Midnight Hunt now makes a lot more sense. Now that we got like exploit to support it, we got the new zombie, new zombie panharmonicon enchantment, necro duality to support it. All of a sudden, some of those mechanics from the first set that didn't look powerful enough or flesh out enough to really be decks now they're excited again so i would love to see wizards not go back to doing three set blocks three set blocks are too much the third set's usually bad but i would love to see more two set blocks like stay in the same plane for two sets in a row flesh out the mechanics give us more cards to support the first set i feel like that would make a set design so much better hostafarian for the 33rd month welcome to the fishbowl thank you so much for your subscription big soup cheer for you thank you thank you thank you so today we're talking spoilers as we actually got news spoilers that I haven't even read yet that popped up since last time I refresh we're talking spoilers and we're playing historic we got some Jake we got some historic Jake dragon welcome to the better for story as well too uh, that is that is true welcome to the fishbowl for the 10th month thank you for your subscription big soup cheer for you so here's the plan as far as actually playing magic today we have we have some historic Jake we have this enigmatic incarnation deck with moon blast cleric that actually looks pretty sweet I think this deck's a uh, pretty interesting looking so we're gonna start off with some incarnation action as backups, we still got the combo elemental deck that we haven't gotten to yet that's been floating around for a little bit, trying to go off by copying Risen Reef a bunch of times. We still have the legendary Orzhov deck. We also have... Wait, I feel like a deck's missing. I feel like there was another... I feel like there was another deck that I'm forgetting about. Hmm, did I not import a deck? Oh, I didn't import a deck. Haha. <laughs> we also have... Oh my god, this deck... <laughs> this tank this deck I, this deck looks so janky we have this i'm gonna actually import it right now and you'll see it along with me we have a platinum mythic rank player special uh pmrp for the best magic player of all time platinum mythic rank player this uh <laughs> This Mystic Reflection combo deck with no cyborg. It is the epitome of meme or dream action. Trying to, it's got pacifism. Who plays pacifism outside of Platha Mythic Rank player? But trying to uh, copy Terror of the Peaks with Mystic Reflections. So we got some janky fun, but we're starting with Enigmatic Incarnation. And then, as course, as we go along, we're going to be talking about spoilers. And we're going to start by talking about a couple spoilers right now because they just popped up and I haven't even read them yet. Mama Boo! Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Thank you for the kind words big soup cheer for you thank you thank you thank you yeah i bet edgar's coming on like the last day probably i noticed you never talked about scattered thoughts Ooh, scattered wait what are scattered thoughts scattered thoughts uh scattered thoughts oh yeah i'll put it in tomorrow's video or maybe i missed it i'll try to add it um it's fine uh, look at your top four snag to the rest go in your graveyard the big issue i see with it i think it's a good limited card the big problem we have in standard is we have a lot of other card draw spells we just got thirst for whatever the three mana one that's draw three discard two unless you discard a basic land i think that does the same thing but better we have memory deluge we have behold the multiverse we have graven lore so i think as far as standard is concerned even though it's not a bad card it probably gets beaten out by the other options but it is a nice way to fill your graveyard and uh it 
probably going to be very good in limited, but I don't think super constructed playable. What are these new rares that I haven't seen yet? Number one, Headless Rider. Three mana, three, one zombie. When Headless Rider or another non-token zombie you control dies, create a shooting black zombie. Create oh, that card's actually... That's a really good zombie. Like, even by itself, it's a 3-mana three 3-1, three which is fine, that is going to give you a 2-2 two -two when it dies. That's that's already a good card. That's already a good card. Plus, if you're playing Zombie Tribal, your other zombies are dying, and you're getting tokens from them as well. Good Wrath Protection, good Removal Protection, allows you to attack more aggressively, allows you to do some jump block shenanigans to stay alive. That actually seems like a key zombie for zombies working in Standard. We also got Glorious Sunrise, 5-mana enchantment. Begin to combat on your turn. Choose one. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and trample until end of turn. All right, mini overrun. Uh, target land games tap to add three green mana. Okay, so a little bit of ramping. Draw a card if you control a creature with power three. <laughs> three or greater, you gain three life. I don't know why wizards, I mean, I guess they have to throw like, oh, like a creature with power three or greater. Your green deck's always going to have a creature with power three and greater by turn five. Like, unless you just got wrath or something, it's basically just draw a card. I feel like wizards feels like it can't just say draw a card, which it shouldn't because it's green, but a power three or greater creature, that is not much of a hoop to jump through. That actually doesn't seem that bad. Uh, if you're behind, you can gain life. If you got a big board, you can kill your opponent. Worst case, you can ramp into, I don't know, coma or something. Actually, it seems seems kind of kind of reasonable but anyway if new spoilers pop up uh let me know let me know because uh we'll talk about them as we go along thinking about making a shia deck what is what is your favorite card before we get into the actual magic what is your favorite card so far i know for me it is simple it is straightforward there's no question it is definitely necro duality oh my goodness i love necro duality so very much i cannot wait this is the closest thing we've had to a new panharmonicon in uh, in quite a minute in quite a minute in a uh, standard so expect some necro duality decks whether it's good or not oh i cannot wait to start playing necro duality it just looks so much fun tox was really cool Tox was really cool. I want to play Tox Roll Dagger Bird in Commander. I think that's what I'm uh, I'm looking forward to. Cultivator Clauses. Definitely interesting. Got some shenanigans. The abundance combo seems really good in uh really good in Commander. Uh so Reflections of Lajara, this has come up before. Reflections of Lajara is not very good. Uh, there's two big differences. Let me pull up Reflections of Lajara, because that is that is a good question. I can pull it up in here. Um so Reflections of Lajara is similar to the zombie enchantment. Five mana, when it enters a battlefield, choose a creature type. When you cast a spell of the chosen type, copy that spell. There's two issues with Refractions of Lajara. One is it triggers when cast. Triggering when the creature enters the battlefield is actually way, 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 way more powerful and doubly so for a tribe like zombies because they're very recursive and graveyard based. So you can reanimate stuff, other shenanigans like that that don't involve casting the creature. The other thing is the way wizards made this mechanic of copying permanent it doesn't work with any token shenanigans stuff so your doubling seasons don't do anything i don't know why i still don't understand why they decided to do it that way but basically none of that anointed procession doubling season they don't work with reflections the new zombie panharmonicon card actually does so it's better i think in uh, in multiple ways leon leafar welcome to the fishbowl thank you so much for your subscription big soup cheer for you thank you thank you thank you well anyway let's let's do reminders and start playing magic and we will talk in his if we got in his questions comments favorite cards We'll talk about it as we go along, and if you new, uh, see new spoilers pop up, let me know, and we will uh, we will discuss them live. First uh, impressions. Another end cast uh, triggers protect from counters. It does. That's true. That is true. Um, it's also one more mana, which that is a relatively big deal. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, Reflections is a card that I was hyped about, and then it has just consistently disappointed me when I've actually tried to play it. I haven't played it too much in Standard, uh, but I don't play, you can play both of them. Playing both of them is kind of cool. Hey, what's up, Lenny? How are you? So reminders, replay YouTube as we fight the old streams, including this one in the future. Normal YouTube, daily spoilers, of course, every day. Tomorrow, tomorrow we have a, a spicy Surprise Against Odds episode. There was no poll last week. You might have noticed that. Uh, we are, we are playing some jank. We are playing playing some jank. Uh, I'm not going to spoil the deck, but it's sweet. The poll for next week is already up on the YouTube, so go vote on that, but it's a really sweet against odds uh, tomorrow. And yesterday's Budget Magic, ooh, 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 yesterday's Budget Magic was a good one. Karth in Modern on a $100 budget, one of my favorite Modern Budget decks we've played in a while. So check that out on the YouTube. A reminder, 
Uh, we're starting with some enigmatic incarnation, but probably maybe going to jump around a little bit. A reminder that our sponsor today is Card Kingdom. And if you need some Innistrad Crimson Val cards or any other cards, really, and get them at cardkingdom.com slash mtggoldfish. Even get a free MTG Goldfish sticker. Let them know you want one in your order notes and they'll hook you up. So thank you to Card Kingdom. Otherwise, merch page, tokens, t-shirts, playmats, good way to support the, uh, the stream and the channel and the slate. Clean out Richard's garage. Donations always appreciated. Never required. $2 or more gets your message read on stream. Unless Let's play some magic and talk some spoilers. Hey, Seth, just watch your Karth video. What do you think about the deck in Abzad? I think that Karth can be anything from two uh, colors all the way up to five colors and be very strong. The reason to stay Golgari for budget is just uh, the mana gets really expensive. So every color you add, you can add other cheap planeswalkers, but supporting it mana base wise ends up being uh, ends up being expensive. So it basically had to be two colors to make it work under budget. But, uh, but yeah, uh, I think the possibility is to go all the way up to five colors with Karth. Fully powered Karth for a stream. I'd be down with that. I think it would be fun. I mean, I really like playing with Karth. Thought I needed Lolf. Ooh, Lolf could be, Lolf could be, uh, interesting. It would have been good against the Phoenixes. That's true. A way to block the Phoenixes probably would have won us that match. So anyway, what are we starting with today? We are starting in Historic with some Enigmatic Incarnation. Enigmatic Incarnation is a really cool card. Filberto! Uh, for the 14th month. Hey, Seth, been playing a Skeleton Swarming for Budget Magic for a while by killing it. Thanks for the brew. Skeleton Swarming is a sleeper. That card gets people. I I'm glad it's been working out for you. Welcome back to the Fishbowl. Big stream cheer for you. So in a magic incarnation, four mana enchantment that on our end step lets us sack an enchantment to grab a creature with its mana value plus one directly to the battlefield. So idea of this deck is we have like Omen of the Sea, enchantment draws us a card. We have Meat Hook Massacre, enchantment rats away the board. We have Treacherous Blessing, enchantment draws us card. We have Oath of Kaya, enchantment that deals damage. We have Binding the Old God, enchantment that gives us removal. All of these enchantments are essentially ETB enchantments. So we get our value out of them right away. We play them and immediately get the value and then we can sack them to enigmatic incarnation and let's say we sacrifice a omen of the sea we can get renegade rallyer and get it back we can get a skyclave apparition we get a moonblast cleric to find another enchantment for the next turn we can sacrifice oath of gaia and get a ganti or a chupacabra we can sacrifice binding and get a scarab god or a cavalier of dawn so there's like four color value shenanigans that abound with this deck and it looks just super fun to play the big new addition enigmatic incarnation been around since cal time the big new addition is moonblast cleric which just greatly ups the consistency we get to find our enigmatic incarnation we need to find our other enchantments to support the incarnation and just grind out as much value as possible in the sideboard more enchantments uh counter protection counter spells a bunch more tutor target creatures thought distortion to, uh, to get the control decks and that's basically the plan grinding out graveyardy or grinding out enchantment etb value essentially and uh, yeah i'm i'm excited for this deck this deck looks really fun to play i don't know if it's uh i don't know i don't know how good it is but it's gonna be fun do you think Giralf killed his sister? Uh, didn't we just get Gisa? Wasn't there Gisa in the last set? I mean, <laughs> I, what is the time frame between Innistrad, Midnight Hunt, and Innistrad Crimson Vow? Is there enough? Is there enough time for Giralf to have killed Gisa? <laughs> I mean, not that I know of. Gisa's looking pretty good there. Gisa, I don't know if you've noticed this. Gisa looks just like D from uh, from Always Sunny in this picture. I think that's a a very D, <laughs> a very D from Always Sunny picture. Someone needs an altar of Gisa is uh, is D. <laughs> uh, this end. Eh, I mean, we got ramp. We got a treacherous blessing. We got a wrath. We'll, we'll keep it. We'll keep it. There's like a week between them. <laughs> So what do you, uh, so what do you, oh dear, oh dear, Dragon Rage Channeler. Well, we have a, we have an answer in Oath of Kaya. So, so what are you thinking? Do you think that Innistrad Crimson Vow is more powerful? <laughs> Looks like, <laughs> oh, that's one of my, that's one of the best running jokes of, uh, <laughs> Sweet G. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. That's one of the best running jokes. The D is a bird is one of the best running jokes from the show. And then they... <laughs> The the Halloween party episode where <laughs> they're all messed up and she literally turns into an ostrich. <laughs> so good. My fish is bad. Welcome to the fish bowl. Thank you so much for your subscription for the 12th month. Wow. What in the world is happening? This is turn two. <laughs> God almighty. Uh, well, I guess we learned a lesson about losing die rolls. 
Hot, look at this dart. <laughs> what are we supposed to do about this dart? Oh, uh, I think my complaining brought the one drop into uh, existence. If we had not complained about that other card, which rightfully that other card should be oh, uh, wizards, wizards, wizards. Why did you make that a, why? Why did you ruin that card? That, cause that other card's sweet. Uh, I don't remember the name. It's gonna take me a minute to remember all the names of all these cards. But uh, where's the where's the one drop that can make wolves? Right here, Keswick Wolf Rider. Look at that wolf in the art. The wolf dominates that art, but for some reason they focus on the little person riding on top of it. This should definitely be a wolf card for the werewolf deck. And it would be sweet in the werewolf deck, but instead it's a human knight and it's basically useless in every place. Like that's, it's kind of interesting how such slight changes on a magic card can take it from being really playable to really on are they still doing <laughs> golly this is not fair this is not fair magic this is not fair magic hey arn and thank you for the for the huge raid how did how did the scream go welcome raiders we are dying here on turn two to uh <laughs> the most ridiculous yeah we're we're i mean we can shock ourselves to six go back up to nine and then i mean there's <laughs> goodness not much we're gonna do about that. That was that was brutal. Thank you so much for the raid and welcome, welcome everyone. The wolf should be riding a human. My, <laughs> I uh, I have a little I have a little nephew. He's so funny. Uh, baby baby Jax. He's like not quite two yet, and uh, <laughs> and he loves a he loves bear. And uh, my sister also got one of the one of the puppies from the same litter, and they like play together. And uh, Jax, is, he's like the wildest little baby, but the puppies will be fighting and like really going at it like puppies do. They'll be growling and fighting and he will just get right in with them and uh, and uh, and wrestle with the puppies as I wouldn't even want to get in there because they can get pretty ferocious when they're like playing with each other. But uh, but yeah, he'll jump. He'll jump right in there with them. No, no questions asked. <laughs> Oh, but what made me think of that is he also tries to ride them. He has this thing about trying to ride a uh, bear and bear puts up with it, but he has not successfully been able to, uh, to ride him yet, <laughs> but he tries basically every time I see him, <laughs> I'm doing well, Cordius. How are you? All right. Ley line of the voids in, what do we have that can actually, actually stop this Phoenix onslaught? That was a brutal, brutal beat down. Uh, so Leyline's good. I don't know if Leyline saves us. Cavalier doesn't seem very necessary. Dude, bro, man, guy, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Destiny Spinner, not really doing that much. Oh, boy. I feel like our, uh, maybe we can try this Archon. Archon does die, but if it lives, it seems good trial of ambition maybe like that doesn't really stop a doesn't really stop a phoenix long term oh this is this is rough skis uh yeah who i don't think we're built for this matchup i do not think we're built for this matchup i'm loathing the new four drop red dragon like why did epiphany need more yeah that card is uh hey what's up awesome dude how are you have we talked about spoilers we've been talking about them as we've been going on uh, going along a bit um yes we're gonna mulligan i would really love to find a ley line well okay we got an enigmatic incarnation at least our mana situation is pretty sketchy um yeah all right here we go boom sun petal grove <laughs> How's the Jade coming along? Well, this is the first match we've played, and so far we've been getting absolutely smacked. So how good do you think the new extra turn spell is gonna be? That's been a that's been a big conversation. Is the new extra turn spell going to further pother, uh, power up Epiphany? Or is it a bad enough extra turn spell that it doesn't matter? I actually think that card's kind of fun. I am worried about it blowing up Epiphany even more. Maybe the best case scenario is, oh jeez. Black mana, moon blessed cleric. Oh, so far so bad for the jank. I wonder if we, is there an enchantment we could get that would fix our mana? All right, go, go, <laughs> go, go, three, two. <laughs> Opponent flips the Delver, of course, with a consider. 
Ay, 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 ay. This is not a not a good start. Not a good start. Expressive iteration. Draw some cards. Or maybe our opponent's deck's just absolutely busted. So do you think standard? I mean, I'm really hyped for Crimson Vow. I think Crimson Vow more powerful than Midnight Hunt. This set looks amazing. On the other hand, there is kind of bad news. Like, did you, uh... <clears throat> oh, geez, more Delvers. Uh... Hmm. Well, okay. I guess that means we're not <clears throat> instantly dead. Just mostly dead. Get rid of the Sprite Dragon. Back up to 14. Hit you. Please stop flipping Delvers. Did you see the top eight from the from the SCG Invitational? And I know it was a split event, so that does complicate things a little bit. But look at this. Look at the standard top eight. Epiphany. Demir control, Demir control, Epiphany, Epiphany, Grixis control, Epiphany, Epiphany. Do you think that Crimson Vow is powerful enough to change this? Is it going to shake this up? Is it going to make the meta less like this? Or is blue and to a lesser extent red just so powerful it doesn't really matter what? Jeez, um. Uh, wow, this has been... This has been absolutely brutal. Oh, no lands. Yep. All right. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's pretend like that match didn't happen. I think that one didn't happen. <laughs> hey, I'm doing well, fellas. How are you? Oh, I see. We get, we haven't played arena so much. We got bumped all the way down to gold. So we're playing against uh, people who are really good at flipping delvers. I think there was a correlation. Gold players are the best at flipping delvers. <laughs> Would you consider a deck like this for much a bro? Ooh, let me let me see. Oh, I do love me Nick Fit decks. Ooh, with a with greater Gargadon in there too. That's a that's spicy. You got the Titania Gargadon combo. I mean, the only so the only problem with this deck is I've ar we've already played a lot of Nick Fit decks in Legacy. I it's like my favorite Legacy archetype. So I will play Nick Fit in Legacy all day. It's just like I love playing Nick Fit. But I don't know. Do you want to see more Nick Fit, or have we played have we played enough Nick Fit that we should play other things? All right. This looks fine. Mana Dork, Card Draw, Incarnation. This looks this looks better. This looks better. Hopefully, we're not getting beaten down by Delvers on turn two again. Merfolk. Okay. Uh, concerning. Concerning. Another... Huh. So, apparently, gold is a very aggro... Very aggro place to be. Sanctum Weaver. Go. New spoiler alert. Ooh. Wait. We don't have any new spoilers on the site yet. Isolated Chapel. Uh-oh. Okay, we gotta we gotta look at the deck list. Is there a three drop that's worth getting? Nick Fit is a a unique legacy deck. Mostly built around Veteran Explorer and sacking it to ramp. So we can play this, we can sack our mana dork to get a Renegade Rally or get back to Mana Dork. Skyclave, eat a Lord. Those don't seem bad. And then we can Treacherous Blessing into Chupacabra. Oh, maybe this is going to work. Maybe maybe we're in business now. All right, Enigmatic Incarnation. Step one. Go to Rensap. Sack Sanctum Weaver. Get a Renegade Rally. Get back, Sanctum Weaver. Combo. That's a combo. I've been watching your VODs on YouTube. First time catching you live. Hey, welcome, Professor Bonger. Good to have you. Good to have you. <laughs> that, I agree. That is nice. <laughs> that is a nice little value loop. Opponent. Another Lord. Come on, a speaker. We don't have an island. We will kill your Lord. <laughs> We have a blue card, but there's no island there. Uh, okay, so. Treacherous Blessing. Draw some cards. Oh, this might be working. This might be where. Oh my god, Meat Hook Masker. Play a land. How much mana we got? Ho, 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 ho. It's going to be a massacre. It's going to be a massacre. <laughs> oh, I love this card. Uh, yes. Boom. Wipe them all away. End of turn. Drain you. Gates of Life, sack it. Oh, we're gonna rebuild. We get to do it again. We get to do it again. Renegade Rallier comes back into play. Gets back the Sanctum Weaver. The fun does not stop. <laughs> oh, this deck's sweet. This deck is sweet, sweet, sweet. It's been a minute since you played a Panharmonicon deck. It has, so here's the thing. 
as much as it pains me to fa say this, and this might be a, oh God, we can do it again. <laughs> we can do it again. Actually, we don't even need to. We can just get a, we can get choops, choops and goops. Uh, so how do we do this now? Okay, let's think. We gotta think. Meat Hook Massacre. Rass our board. Can we play this? Okay, so how much does this make? One, two, three. Oh, this is kind of cute. Okay, so. Ha. Huh. Is it cute? Do we even care? All right, Meat Hook Massacre. X2. Wrath your board again. <laughs> Too much value. Drain you. Gain life. Arc out of Sun's Grace. End of turn. Sack the treacherous blessing. Get a god tea. Steal us some merfolk. Steal us a fish. Ooh, silver gill. Uh, that's a lot of mana, but sure. Sure, pass the turn. Um, I think the Epiphany deck sideboard gets better. I'm not convinced that any cards spoiled so far. Uh, wow, that was that was a blowout. As bad as the last match went, this one went so good. Did you see the new Is It Spoiler Wandering Mind? I have not. Let me see. I will look it up right now. New spoiler. Oh, there's, there's two new. You are correct. There are two new spoilers. All right. Spoiler number one. Parasitic Grasp. Two mana instant. Parasitic Grasp. Deals three damage to target human creature, and you gain three life. You can cleave it for three mana. Okay. Um, essence drain, not drain. We just had this card in Keldheim Standard that was just the cleave. I, I can't think of the name. It starts with essence. It was actually relatively heavily played as a sideboard card, as a way for your uh, a way for your like slower decks to catch up life-wise with a uh, with aggro decks. So I think this card probably actually can see some play. Like three mana black lightning helix. It only hits creatures. That's kind of fine. And sometimes you get the upside of casting it for two mana. So I think that's a that's a playable card. The is it card. What is this is it card? Wandering mine. Three mana two one flying horror. When it enters the battlefield, look at the top six cards of your library. You can reveal a non-creature, non-land from among them. Put it on your hand. Ooh, you know what that does? You know what that does? That digs for Painter Monicon. It's right on curve. Oh, the, yeah, all right, hang on, I'll, I'll move it. I'll move it into a better spot. Uh, yeah, I'll give it to my next side. I mean, that comes into play, digs for your Panharmonicon, right on curve with Panharmonicon. Eh? Actually, that is a pretty good card. A three mana, two, one flyer that draws you a card when it comes into play. I think that could be playable somewhere. We'll see, there's a lot of big flyers in standard. Maybe that's an issue, but that is a good value, a good value three drop. Like, that is a really good value three drop. Oh, we were talking about Panharmonicon. So here's the issue with the, uh, here's the issue with Panharmonicon now. And maybe, maybe I'm off base and blaming the wrong thing, but I feel like best of one has killed Panharmonicon. <laughs> Let me explain. So I feel like because partly of best of one, oh yeah, new Reddit. I can't get behind the new Reddit. I know it's been a million years, but I'm not, I don't believe in updating my, <laughs> my OBS. I don't believe in updating my Reddit. <laughs> I'm, I'm old and stuck in my ways. Um, but I feel like Best of One has kind of killed Panharmonicon. I feel like Wizards has really pushed towards printing more flexible answers to things. Um, so we get all these Prismari commands. We get tons of abrades. So a lot of decks now can just kind of like incidentally deal with Panharmonicon with cards they're playing in their main deck for other reasons. So I feel like Panharmonicon has gotten has gotten a lot worse. I still love it, and I still try to play it, and I still will try to play it, but I've been pretty disappointed the last couple times that I've tried it. It just always gets blown up. It always gets blown up now. There's just too much incidental incidental hate. Hmm. So Incarnation does literally nothing with this Graft Digger's Cage out. Brain Maggot does sort of something. Oh, goodness. How are we doing this? Well, Incarnation's got to go. I am understanding this right. Players, uh, creatures, cards, and graveyard and libraries can't enter the battlefield. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. That is an issue. 
Do we even want the brain maggot? Brain maggot doesn't do much. I mean, I guess we can brain maggot tap land into chupacabra. Maybe that's something. Winter Milan, welcome to Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super here for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Who plays? Who plays Cage? <laughs> I blame the Cage players, not myself. Uh, oh, this actually doesn't work, does it? Hmm. So we can't play the Tap Land. Well, we can play Drown Catacombs, Brain Maggot, Snag a Good God. <laughs> Take the removal spell, I guess. Oh, God. If our opponent ever draws a lord, that's so much value. That is so much value. Strawberry eggs. Good to have you back. I did miss you. I mean, oh, my God. Sevulin. Oh, this is so painful. Indestructible as long as you control at least two other merfolk. So we got to block. Give our opponent back the removal, but then we can choop. Ooh, choop choop away the Sevulin. Hopefully, kill you. Pass the turn. We're like a million white men away from casting this Cavalier of Dawn. <laughs> Literally, Spice Lord MTG. Favorite non Panharmonicon style card. It is actually the, the very opposite. <laughs> when it's not Panharmonicons, I like Blood Mooning people. Well, okay. Blood Moon is my second favorite card. Removal? Sort of. Opponent does have a negate, though. Well, play the white mana. Pass the turn. All right. Tap out and meet the meat hook. <laughs> please, please, please. I tweeted you about an old video about gremlin trading cards. Ooh. I don't know. I don't really know anything about gremlin trading cards. Non-creature spell fight. Hmm. <laughs> How much is this to scry? Two? Three. I mean, I guess we can just slam this Archon. I guess that's our best bet. We're also losing life to this Treacherous Blessing that we can't get rid of. Kind of a weird... We're kind of in a weird spot here. This is actually a pretty weird spot. Hmm. Hmm. Well, okay. I mean. All right. Go, go, Archon. Save us. Save us, friend. About it. Untaps. Land. Oh, we really need to untap with this. Miss Binder taps down the Archon. Leaves up the negate, goes attacking. Oh, can we do both? One, two. Huh. Well, uh, Oath of Kaya. Lose a life. Opponent's gonna counter. That's okay. Sure. We will accept it. Because we got another one. Oath of Kaya. Get rid of that Rejury. Make a dork. Okay, things are looking up. Things are looking up. Kill the Rejury. Triome. Archon of Sun's Grace is a decent card. Hit ya. Came back that life. Pass the turn. We're stabilizing. Now we just got to get rid of another Lord. We got to get rid of this Graph Digger's Cage. And then we got to find Incarnation. And then the real fun begins. About it. Was worried we'd not see you this week with spoiler season in full swing. Oh, I know. We we missed a couple of str Oh, white, white. We need another white source. Hmm. I mean, I guess we can just massacre. Massacre is a powerful, a powerful, powerful Magic the Gathering card. Uh, massacre you. Uh... Resolve that first. <laughs> Kill those merfolk. Oh, I love Massacre. Play the land, did ya? Yeah, I know we missed a stream. I really, really try hard to... I really, really try hard to get at least two streams 
even during spoiler season. We usually miss one a week because of the daily spoilers just take up so much time. But uh, but yeah, we should be good for today. Obviously today and then uh, Thursday. Yeah, attacking first air probably would have been better. You're right. Well, get him hit ya. Let's do a little value -y loop here. Sack the omen. Don't want you. Don't want you. Renegade Rallier. Lose some life, get back the omen. Draw some cards. Combo. That's a combo. <laughs> Broke it. Yeah, attacking first would have been better. You're correct. I was I blame I blame you, chat. We were I was distracted. <laughs> distracted by all of you. Play the land past the turn. Well, we found a way to get rid of the Raptor's cage finally. About it. Came on a speaker. Sure. Why are they playing untap land? Opponent's about to die. So about it. Taps down, double speaker, goes attacking. Sure, sure, sure. Oh, we get two Cavalier of Dawn. Lose a life. Get rid of the Graph Digger's Cage. And opponent, done. Done, done, done. <laughs> oh, yeah, we, we got him pretty, pretty easily there. So, so as far as in his trod, I got I got questions for you, chat. You gotta you gotta answer me these questions. Question number one: How good do you think Henrika is? Henrika, it's a tricky card to evaluate. The front side it looks pretty bad. Four mana, one three. Those are not stats. Those are not good stats. It's like a a mini very bad rankle. However, the back side actually kind of sweet you can immediately transform it because it can transform with the first choice at the beginning of combat so it can also be a four mana three four uh, vampire and hawk essentially do you think this card's good how good do you think henrika is are you excited for it where do you want to play it go yeah i i like henrika quite a bit too the thing i like about so here's the thing I like about Henrika is I feel like it's pretty good in a world where there's a lot of gold span dragons and there's a lot of smothering eggs being flipped. Like there's a lot of these big flyers and Henrika is kind of like a removal spell almost. Ooh, historic brawl. Are you going to build around her as, as a uh, commander? Olivia, <clears throat> after talking to Richard and Krim on the podcast on Monday, um, the fact that Olivia is a 3-4 is a bit of a... That is a bit of an issue. It does seem like Olivia might be smashing into... Smashing into uh, more powerful creatures, like uh, Goldspan Dragons and Smoldering Eggs and so forth. So I think that is... That is my concern, is the body is not very big. I almost wish that Olivia was like a... I don't even know, like a... Like a 1-6 one, one or something. <laughs> It probably doesn't make a ton of uh, sense flavor-wise, but I feel like that would... I feel like that would make her more powerful. I feel like it's going to be hard to attack with her. Ugh, Luminarchus Pyrant. Opponent's just going aggro. Going to get it and hit us. Well, play the land. Oath of Kaya. Kill the Aspirant. Threat one down. Pass the Turk. We do have a lot of removal, which I like. Opponent, Speaker of the Heavens. Goes attacking. Ooh. Yeah. I'll play a land. Chupacabra. <clears throat> oh, the Speaker of the Heavens is going to jank us out. Hmm. That was some uh, some gold timing. <laughs> that was some uh, some <laughs> some platinum mythic rank player timing at the moment. Opponent, another out. <laughs> well, if our opponent's just gonna keep drawing Elsids, then none of this is probably gonna matter in the end. Uh, okay, how do we beat an angel every single every single Magic the Gathering turn? One, two, three, so one, two, one, two, hmm. Okay, Moonblast Cleric. I have an idea. I have an idea. <laughs> this idea involves perhaps a, a massacre. There might be a card that is an enchantment that can get us out of this. <laughs> perhaps, boy, 
There's a reason Mihook Massacre costs a million dollars now, and it's because the card is insane. Uh, from everything spoiled so far, do you think there is anything that is powerful enough to prevent an Epiphany ban? So, okay. So here's the thing. One is, uh, uh, there's two things. One is, Fali is very good against it. And we do see some of the, the aggro -y tribes getting powered up a bit. We get to see... If we get Mana Tithe here, I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry. Uh, but we see some of the aggro tribes getting powered up. We get like a one drop werewolf. That's helpful. But this still is the same play pattern. Like making aggro better, you still have the same play pattern of like, oh, can you race? Can you race the epiphany? And I just don't think that's a super fun play pattern over the long term. Here's my, here's my thinking. What about the idea that because wizards printed alchemists, whatever the new extra turn spell i think there's a chance that what wizards does is bans epiphany but i don't think attacking first tier really does much i think what wizards could do is ban epiphany but leave alchemist gambit and then is it players can still do the can still do the the same thing they just have to do it a, a little bit worse i mean i guess there's not any reason there's no reason not to attack here. So we might as well get in. So that's what I'm kind of hoping is maybe that powers down Epiphany by getting it banned. But other than Thalia and Aggro getting a little better, uh, more counter spells, there's nothing that makes me think, oh, Epiphany's just bad now. I think if Epiphany gets banned, Cherry will be more dominating than Epiphany ever was. I honestly don't have a problem with Chariot. <laughs> Attack first, they said. Oh, no. Wow. <laughs> well, that was, I guess, technically a pun. I was reading the chat and thought we were clicking through their combat shenanigans. And apparently, <laughs> apparently we just clicked through our turn. Chat, 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 chat. That's your fault, Jack. <laughs> I I blame you. <laughs> we were distracted by Epiphanies. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler part. Ah, oh, chat. Why do you do this to me, chat? <laughs> Spoiler part. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. We're like 100% to win that game, too. <laughs> you all ask such intriguing questions that demand my attention. <laughs> oh. I'm obviously, I'm obviously just teasing you. <clears throat> but that was a little disappointing, I will say. Because that, that massacre was going to be so good. That massacre was going to be so good. Yeah, let's let's just assume. Let's just assume that they probably had the mana tithe anyway, and it was all for nothing. <laughs> About it. But yeah, I'm not, like, uh, Azika's Chariot, I do not find to be a especially problematic card. It's good, but it's good in a way that Oh, we don't have blue mana, that's awkward. It's good, but it's good in a way that most decks can deal with it, which I think is a, a pretty huge upside. Well, opponent gonna try to save their Speaker of the Heavens. Wow, there. <clears throat> I almost feel bad. Our opponent <laughs> is activating those at a very awkward time. Power Dad, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's a that's a good one. That is a good one. Uh, Sun Petal Grove, Choops Magoops out of here. <clears throat> I guess Linden. All right, blue mana, blue mana, please. So Cherry, it, it dies to everything. Like you can kill it with removal. <laughs> okay, you can kill it with removal. So I don't think. I don't think it could ever be the same sort of problem that other cards can be. Wow, they are gonna get to making angels again. Oh my goodness, not like this magic gods. Oh my God. Oh no. Do you think that lost legacy like effect will fix it or no due to foretell? Uh, I don't think a loss like, jeez. Well, I guess there's a downside to playing a four color deck, which is sometimes you can't cast your most important card and you lose to Jesus. 
<laughs> well, hopefully we draw a Masker off the top and uh, actually cast it this time. About it. Wow, this is... Yeah? Wow, that is an embarrassment. An embarrassment to Magic players everywhere. Well, okay. The first one was on us. The, the second one... Huh. Oh, hmm. <laughs> well, uh, our opponent's tight play carried them. Mirror tweeted out that Blood uh, Purveyor will be getting an errata, so the bonus is until end of turn. Yeah, pretty, pretty obvious that, uh, pretty obvious that they had to do that. There's no way they would intentionally word it that way. Although, I don't know what, up, what is up with Wizards' quality control. Like, Wizards' quality control has been super sketchy lately. Like, it feels like every other set we're getting a card that they just leave a very obvious... <laughs> okay, opponent mulligans one, scoops it up. Uh, it seems like every every set, every other set, we're getting a card where Wizards just, like, forgets to put a word on it. Like, how do you forget to put end of turn? Something you put on literally a million magic cards. Like, so many cards have that effect. Uh, maybe it's because it's so common that Wizards just, they overlook it somehow, but they had, like... Zaffy Thunder Collector that have multiple names. I I don't know what's up with the quality control. All right. Well, I mean, doesn't really feel like a win, but I I guess that counts as a win. Ooh, Doom Foretold. Yeah, Doom Foretold does go does go very well with Mewig Massacre as well. Stuff to uh, stuff to sacri sacrifice. Platinum Mythic rank player. We're not even playing Platinum Mythic rank player. We're going to win a couple more until we're playing them. The quality problem got worse because of the pandemic. Hmm. How would, how would they be connected, though? Like, how would the pandemic have you forget to put until end of turn on cards? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I see the the actual connection there. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but the card the card in reference is uh, let's see. The card we're talking about is oh, I got to got to refresh. Uh so the card we're talking about is Actually, one of the cards I wanted to ask you about. Blood Veil, Blood Vile Purveyor. Four mana, five, six, Flying Trample. When opponent casts a spell, they get a blood token. When it attacks, it gets plus one, plus zero for each blood token defending player controls. Obviously, it should play, say until end of turn on there. Uh, it doesn't say that. So the way it's written, it would attack. And if your opponent has blood tokens, it would get plus one, plus zero forever. And then you attack next turn and get plus one, plus zero more forever, which would be fine, I think, power level wise. But obviously, it would be really, really, really difficult to track. You know, I can't keep that. Magic gods. Magic gods. Um, this sounds sweet if we just draw green source. Mmm, so risky. Okay. Well, two lands. Two lands is something. That's better than one, which we're, is where we've been for the last million turns in a row. Oh, disappointing. Disappointing. Magic gods. Uh, So do you think that card's good? That This is a card that I think, I've seen some people say it's busted. Other people say it's unplayed it, unplayable. What do you think about uh, Blood Vile? How good is Blood Vile? Now, well, playing the land past the turret. Is this another, another life gain deck? Ugh. Well, Moonblast Cleric, go digging for a, I guess just an Omen. Let's get an Omen to see if we can draw cards and get out of this. I think it's playable. I think it's actually really, ugh, it's huge. It's huge. How big of a deal is giving your opponent a bunch of, uh, a bunch of blood tokens though? That is a drawback. Like that is a real drawback. It, the stats are insane. Oh, this might be. This might be my favorite Meat Hook Massacre matchup. Our opponent may be attempting to make skew swarms. Uh, I think we'll keep both of those. Over onto him, untap. Let's uh, let's take a peek. Take a little peek. Rat. Oh my god. 
Huh? Wrath of God Paladin class? <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, interesting. Uh, we will take a Cavalier, I guess. Make our opponent Wrath. <laughs> what is our opponent doing over there? I guess weird things happen at, uh, at the gold level once you get bumped down. Upload it. The hand of God. Well, let's draw some cards. We just need to find Enigmatic Incarnation and we get to do really fun things. Now well, play the tap land, not an incarnation. I mean we can move best cleric for it <clears throat> in the future and start the start the fun. About it. Paladin class for some reason I don't really understand. Cavalier of Thorns. Sure. Mill some cards. Now play the land. Brain maggot. Guy is. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on in our opponent's deck. <laughs> yeah, so that card is. Uh, this is an enigmatic incarnation deck. It will make more sense once we tutor up this enigmatic incarnation. So yeah, I don't know. I'm skeptical of cards that give opponents value for free. At the same time, at the same time, it is a really big, it is a really big body. Opponent's gonna level up, gonna level up. Gonna go attacking. We are going to chump. This doesn't have trample, right? It does not. All right, we're gonna chump. MSK. All right, now we get to do fun things. Incarnation. Pass the turd, no attacks. Sacrifice. Omen of the sea. Get renegade rallier. Get back, omen of the sea, draw a card. The value loop has come. This is, oh, Mihook Massacre, Treacherous Blessing. Oh, all right, one to the bottom, one to the top. We'll keep the blessing. Pass the turn. About it. We got jump blockers. We're not dead yet. I don't think we need Choop yet. We're okay with chump blocking for the time being. Like, our creatures don't really matter at the moment. Solemn. Okay. Oh, if we get Ugin, I'm going to be sad. Hey, what's up, Doug? How are you? How long into Crimson Vow standard do you think it'll take to ban Epiphany? I would love for it not... I would love for it not needing to be banned, basically. What do you think of Scattered Thoughts? Is it just a better memory deluge in the common slot? Uh, Scattered Thoughts, I think. Let's uh, let's pull up Scattered Thoughts real quick. Actually, uh, I I don't actually tweet the Goldfish account. That is a uh, that is someone else. But Scattered Thoughts, I think that it is worse than other options i don't think it's bad and it's awesome that it's a common like it's a decent card uh if you really care about the graveyard i could see the argument for it being me better than a memory deluge however the card that i actually think will beat it out is probably thirst for discovery this is the card where if you care about the graveyard it's one mana cheaper sure you see one less card but you can end up with uh, the cards you want in the graveyard just as well so i feel like if you're trying to play a graveyard deck thirst for discovery probably beats it out so i think scattered thoughts is good but probably just not quite good enough for for uh for standard decks because there's there's a bunch of other options right now basically huh oh another incarnation well, all right now we will choop and take two i guess we should have i guess we should have sequenced those in the opposite order but get rid of the cavalier for now please no nugan us <laughs> ever and now we start the sacking. The bad news is we don't actually have many four drops to get. But we're gonna second. We gotta get rid of these blessings. These blessings are killing us. Get a Gonti. Steal. 
the guy is blessing. <laughs> Pona had so many big things in their deck, and we steal the guy is blessing in four lands. Pona, gonna pump the Solemn. They're gonna have two active Paladin classes. The scariest Solemn in history. <laughs> <laughs> we will we will block we will block Ooh, renegade rallyer all right so let's let's think let's think we don't want to lose to this deck i agree actually this hmm this blessing could be good i think we just let's binding blow up the paladin class Tap land. Hit you with the brain maggot. I think it's five drop time. Sack the binding. This is where we want to be. This is where we want to be. Get a... Ooh. You know what? Let's have fun. Let's get a Yarion. Blink you. Blink you. Blink you. <laughs> okay, look it up. About three... Bitty. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Bone it. Arjun Roska draws a card. Big scoop here for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. About it. Looking. And. Oh, now we're. Now I like where we're at. Now I like where we're at. About it. I'm gonna go attacking. We're gonna block with Yarion. I mean, we win the long game. Unless our opponent has Ugin. Like, we will win the long game. We just gotta. Gotta keep staying alive. About it. Solemn. Draws. <laughs> Wizard said on Twitter that their account that the oral text will say until end of turn. Yeah, I think it I think it pretty much has to. There's just no way to track it. I don't know how you keep uh, I don't know how you keep track of it in paper without it. Unless Wizards just really doesn't care about paper anymore. Which I think they do to some extent. Okay. Let's uh let's resolve a few sweet triggers. Uh we will I guess it doesn't really matter. Okay. So, Omen. We'll keep the Brain Mega. Pony just drew some cards. Gonti. Ooh, a Mortal Sun Suite. I do like a Mortal Sun. Um, untap. Play a land. Go to combat. Smack ya. Mm. Alright, let's go... Brain maggot. Really scared of Ugin. I just don't want to get Ugin. I guess I also don't want to get Waking Sun Avatar. <laughs> I forgot that was a magic card, but it technically is. Uh, okay. Incarnation. Oath of Kaya. Hit ya. Get some triggers. Sack Treacherous Blessing. Archon. Sack. Omen of the Sea. Get a... Mm, I kind of want a Gani again. Yeah, we're going to do it. <laughs> Gonti. Oh my god, Sylvan Awakening. Oh boy, don't, I hope they don't top deck that. Oh god. Oh no, that's a scary card. Oh. Wrath of God. Are we going to get him with our own Sylvan Awakening? <laughs> yes! Yes, the god D reverse Arito. It worked. The card draw is going to work. Oh, watch this. <laughs> <laughs> About it emerges. Sure. Bad news opponent. We will awaken. And uh do a little smashing. <laughs> Woo! I don't know what our opponent's doing. They have a lot of random cards. We got with the last reset we got we got bumped down to uh to gold. So we have seen some some spice, I would say. We've seen some spice at the gold level uh, today. Uh, I think we need to try to stop these Wraths. Maybe the Ranger Captain? I don't even know. Maybe we just outgrind this deck. I guess that's the other option, that maybe 
maybe we just outgrind them because our deck has so much late game, grindy late game value. Uh, all right. We still want the counters, though, I think. We don't need Destiny Spinner. Yeah, we'll go down one more Brain Maggot. Let's try it like that. I mean, the deck is really fun when it gets going. That was a sweet win. Archon? Uh, Archon to stop the land beat down might actually be... That might actually be necessary. That is a scary card. Ooh. We're keeping this. We need a land. We need a land of a green color. You know what's the most hilarious? If we could somehow Meat Hook Massacre their lands. That would be so sweet. Emergent Sequence. Well, I guess we can get that one eventually. Green mana. Ooh, not quite. Where's the green mana? Dude, bro, my guy with a gift subbed to Marjax. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ooh. Hmm. All of these are pretty bad for us at the moment. Um, We will take the Night of Autumn. Okay, lands. Lands, please, magic god. I'm getting scared about it. They get to kill the brain maggot. I don't know if they realize it. Hopefully not. No blocks. Oh, they don't realize it. And we draw green mana. Okay. Um, well, that's encouraging. Moon Bless Cleric. <laughs> oh, uh, I don't think our opponent knows that we have enchantment creatures. Actually, no, let's just take Treacherous Blessing. That's even more card draw. Uh, hit you. Down to 19 past the turn. Someone should tell the opponent they need to grind a diamond before they can get a deck on Memer Dream. I mean, their deck, it, it looks fine. I mean, it's kind of like a a green-white ramp control deck, I would say. It's, it's weird. It's not a tier deck by any stretch. But since all the shrines are in historic, we'd be doing a against the odds five-color shrine deck. It would be so janky and fun. We've played shrines in the... We've played shrines in the past. However... Yeah, let's see if we can draw land. I kind of want to wait because I'm expecting them to come back in Kamigawa. I am fully expecting we'll get more shrines. So I think that I'm going to try to wait until Kamigawa comes out in like February and see if there's more shrines and then revisit shrines again. Yeah, that was that was an interesting line. I don't know about Emergent Sequence. There's enough ramp that I don't think you need to play Emergent Sequence. Oh, please. 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 <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the worst choices I've ever seen anyone make. They could have just made it a 4-3. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. I mean, maybe they're thinking that we could play Incarnation and sack it and get something which does make... That does make some... Some small-ish amount of sense. But, uh, but yeah, that was... <laughs> <laughs> that was good for us, I think. I think overall, I am pleased with with how that went. Um, hmm. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, let's the Kaya. Get rid of that knight. <laughs> yeah, weird things happen in gold. Apparently, have you seen the Reddit post about my two hundred and forty nine card standard deck in Hooglandia Open? Uh, I haven't. Did you? Get that oath, Kaya. <laughs> I have it again. <laughs> I don't think I don't think our opponent knows these these are enchantment creatures. <laughs> did you did you win any did you win any games with it? <laughs> wow, we were just dodging dodging bullets left and right here. <laughs> Our opponents decided the way to fight Intermedic Incarnation is to just try to blow up any any enchantment that we happen to have. Well, uh, Intermedic Incarnation. Uh, the bad news about this line is it's going to let our opponent know that our Sanctum Weaver is an enchantment. And I'm not sure that I want our opponent realizing that. That seems bad for us, but Sag Sanctum Weaver, Renegade Rallier. Get back. You know what? Let's get the brain maggot. Okay, you can you can royal as much as you want. Thoughts on werewolves. I think 
werewolves are getting better. I would love to see your deck. Is there a reason that it's 249 cards? Or is it... Or is it just uh, just for the memes? Yeah, I think I think our opponent has figured out that we have enchantment creatures. I mean, it's if you're I, and I'm 100% not laughing at our opponent. Some of the lines came across very funny, but our opponent we got bumped down to gold with the last reset, and they're probably just just learning. So definitely no no offense intended at our opponent. It's just pretty. <laughs> Some of the lines come across pretty funny, but we're laughing at the plays, not at our opponent, who I expect is is just learning the game. Um, well, hmm. Well, I guess we brain mag it for no value. Um, Scarab God. Go attacking. Sag the brain maggot. Brain maggot. Gets Renegade Rallier. Gets back Sanctum Weaver. Pass the turn. So what? Oh, by <laughs> the idea is to grow body of research. That's, that's actually kind of hilarious. How big of a fractal did you manage to make? Okay, let's let's see this. Oh, well, now they should obviously kill the incarnation. All right, that's fine. Glass pool mimic. How many creatures are in the graveyard? A couple? Not that many. Mill card, return a card from your graveyard to your hand. Well, go to Go to combat. Attack ya, attack ya. Opponent blocks. Well, now we get to Scarab God back renegade rallier which gets a brain maggot scarab god back knight of autumn blow up mending a dominaria eh, pass the turn about it untaps do you draw wrath Ooh, scoops it up. So here's something I've been thinking about, actually. I know we're in the middle of Innistrad spoilers, and that's our focus, but I kind of think that if you're interested... Oh, my God, we're still at gold, too. We got a ways to go. Um, I kind of think if you're interested at all in the financial side of things, it might be time to pick up Kamigawa stuff already. I think we might have already reached that point where that stuff, like ninjas, potentially, shrines... I wouldn't be surprised to see that stuff start increasing in price. So something to uh, something to keep in mind. Like, <clears throat> I don't really do speculation. I made a I made a a rule a long time ago, back when Budget Magic used to spike prices, that I was gonna stay away from speculation just because I did not want there to be any worries about conflicts of interest. At this point, it might be okay because. Uh, don't uh, budget magic doesn't really spike prices now that arena is a thing like because everyone plays on arenas so you don't have the the real economy going on but like sanctum of all is a card that i would be really tempted it's 60 cents you can probably find copies even cheaper market price is 40 cents this is a card that i'd be tempted just to buy like 20 copies of and just have it sit around because i feel like this is a card that they bring new shines shrines into kamigawa Everyone's going to get hyped. Everyone's going to want to play shrines in their commander decks. And then this card is like the best shrine. Spikes to $5 or something. So I don't know. I'm kind of already already a little bit looking ahead towards towards what might be going on in Kamigawa. I'm next year's set of magic. Like this is an insane year of magic. I don't know if we I don't know if I have fully appreciate uh, fully appreciated, but we're going from Awesome Innistrad into Awesome Innistrad. Oh no, our Nemesis. This is a this is the deck that we sort of got wrecked by last time. But we're going from an awesome Innistrad set into an awesome Innistrad set into Kamigawa that people have wanted for years into uh, this gangster set that looks really sweet into... Oh, please don't sell your karma by Sanctum of All. Don't sell your karma by Magic Cards, period. Um, into Brothers War. Like, I feel like this is going to be one of the best years that we've... Ooh, that is... That is the draw I'm excited about. All right, bon oh, no, 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 Enigmatic Incarnation. If you have Spell Pierce, I'm gonna, okay. End step. 
opponent cast an opt. Sure. That is scry zero to the top, zero to the bottom. How is that possible? Okay. <laughs> Apparently scries went to the top. We will get. Ugh. Hmm. We can just answer this. Do we need to? We can get Renegade Rallyer. Get back. Ugh, how do we want to do this? We can just get rid of the Dragon Rage Channeler. You know what? We're gonna we're gonna Renegade Rallyer. Get Renegade Rallyer. Get back the Sanctum Weaver. It's like none of that ever happened. I'm planning on doing a series of lore videos for the new Forgotten Realms Commander Legends. Ooh, that sounds sweet, Doug. I might do one explain the jokes from Streets of New Caperna, depending on how many mobster movie references they have. Well, based on what we've seen with Innistrad in all the like horror movie references, they gotta they gotta go deep. They gotta go deep. They gotta do like Godfather and all that. Like it's gotta be it's gotta be like that, right? I think it'd be pretty funny. Pwn it. I feel like Wizards likes their pop culture references uh, more now than in the past. Kills a rallier, goes attacking, sure. Play on land. Omen of the sea. Uh, bottom and bottom. Binding. Kill the DRC. End step. Sack binding. Hmm. Well, I mean, I guess you can never go wrong with the Scarab God. <laughs> so what? what's that you most hyped about? Like, Innistrad, Kamigawa, Streets of New Caprina, Brothers War slash Dominaria. What are, what are you most hyped about coming up in the next year? I mean, they all sound so good. I really feel like we're entering a... <sighs> there's been so much... There's been so many problems in the last few years. We've had bad standards. We've had tons of bannings. We had the farcical MPL and pros getting caught cheating in the MPL. We had uh, Walking Dead Secret Lair Drop and all the uproar about that. There's been so many... There's been so many issues, but I really think we might be entering a golden age of magic. Like, I, I think we might be. If you remember, a decade ago, a decade ago, Wizards made Mythics in Shards of Alara. There was a bit of freak out about that. But then we had Zendikar come up and the new fetch lands. And then we had Innistrad, the original Innistrad. And we went into the best period of magic in a long time. Like the early 2000s was absolutely, absolutely massive uh, as far as the growth of the game. And I'm feeling optimistic that that might be happening again. Like I feel like as much as we dislike some of the things about... As much as we dislike some of the things about some of the secret lair stuff and how Wizards makes their money, like, I think when it comes down to it, I think we're actually heading to a really, a really sweet spot with the game uh, over the next few years. Like, I, I think Wizards is doing a lot of things well, despite some of the issues. Uh, no, the cheating, yeah, the, the Yuya thing was the was the cheating thing with the, <laughs> the Mark Tron lands. There was also a couple of MPL people who who ended up getting kicked out uh, for non-cheating reasons, right? Like Owen uh, for more personal. We never really got the the whole stories about a lot of that stuff, but there were multiple MPLs who uh, MPL players who had to leave the league for uh, cheating slash personal conduct issues. Uh, we're gonna time out here. Well, Enigmatic Incarnation. Stop on our opponent's upkeep. Sack the Omen of the Sea. Get a... Glass Pool Mimic. Copy Sanctum Weaver. Stop on our opponent's upkeep. I think we gotta eat this Ox. We gotta eat the Ox. So our opponent can't flash back the Ox. And then we're off to the races. But I really think, like, I don't know. How are you feeling about Magic overall? Am I excited for college basketball going back? Yeah, I, I actually am. This is this is going to be a crazy year for me basketball-wise. I have... Wait, is this our turn still? Okay, hang on. Wait till our opponent's upkeep. On our opponent's upkeep. 
get rid of that ox. With the help of the Scarab God. We do not want you flashing it back. Discard our hand, draw some cards. Yeah, so this year I have... <laughs> my one brother's playing D1 in Detroit. Another brother is playing... Uh, uh, I'm actually a brother and a sister are both playing lower level basketball. So I have three of my, my younger siblings who are playing, I'm playing college basketball this year. So going to have a lot of college basketball to, uh, to keep up on, but how are you feeling about magic overall? Like, I honestly feel like we've maybe are turning the corner and we've come out of the dark woods, uh, of the last couple of years and the light is at the end of the tunnel and we're seeing something maybe really awesome happening. Like I'm feeling more positive about magic in the future in its direction than I have in quite a while right now. Like I feel like wizards is finding this mixture of uh, this mixture of, uh, nostalgia and callbacks for the old players, along with uh, these things that are hopefully bringing in new players. And I feel like they're they're honing in on the right balance of those things, and that we might be heading in a really, really, really good direction. Uh, yeah, I have, uh, there's there's nine, there are nine kids in my family altogether. So there's a million, a million siblings. Uh, so yeah. Uh, if I was going to play a professional sport professionally, well, if I was gonna play a sport professionally, what would it be? Uh, probably, I mean, honestly, it probably would have been football. Yeah, I'm the short one. I'm, I'm almost 6'4", and <laughs> actually not the shortest. Uh, my sisters are shorter than me, and then two of my brothers of the five are shorter than me. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> I'm not the, not the tallest in the family, for sure. Uh, Leyline's in. Maybe Archon. Archon seems good at annoying the opponent. We don't need Destiny Spinner. We don't need, yeah, Gonti seems a little sketchy. Cavalier of Dawn doesn't seem that good. Maybe this is good enough. Ranger Captain of Eos with no one drops is spicy. All right, let's try it like that. Seth's been uh, playing the Murder Engine deck by Brewer's Kitchen. Uh, I I haven't played the murder. Right. Honestly, I haven't even I haven't got to watch that video yet. It's spoiler season, so I've been super busy. So I haven't actually had a chance to uh, to watch Phil's uh, newest video. How how is it? Is it a good one? I mean, my my one brother that's playing D one basketball is uh, seven seven foot, so he is like legitimately super super tall. Ugh, we're gonna mulligan that. Oh, ley line. Okay, ley line is what we were hoping for. That is a good one. Uh, yes, we will begin with that in the battlefield. Demonic Pooper! Thank you for the cheer. Definitely appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So yeah, if I if I was gonna play a pro sport, it'd probably be football. I have the I have the football build. But uh I I couldn't play football growing up because my parents my parents didn't uh <laughs> Well, my mother in specific did not like the idea of a uh, football, thought it was too dangerous. And probably, honestly, rightly so. <laughs> like, with hindsight, uh, football is probably, probably too dangerous. And so I guess I can't blame her. Although I think I could have been, I probably could have been a pretty good football player. Like when I was, when I was like finishing high school, I was, I don't know, like 6'3", 6'4", 260 or something. And like in pretty, pretty good shape. So I think I, I think I could have actually had a, <laughs> If I actually played and worked at it, I probably could have uh, had the size to actually be a football player. Well, Moonbless Cleric. Gonna get countered. Yeah, Phil does a great job with this content. He puts a ton of effort and time and work into it. And uh, it definitely shows, for sure. <laughs> yeah... It was in good shape and then all down here, all downhill from there. Started playing magic and it was over. <laughs> it was over. Oh, uh, no, not. I don't, I don't think it's magic's fault. Actually, if anything, it was probably music's fault. <laughs> I, I went from playing sports and stuff during high school to doing like the, the band thing mostly. Please counter this. Doing the band thing mostly during, uh, during college and, uh, Not really working out and playing sports in the way I used to. Opponent's going to try to flip the egg. 
Uh, my one brother plays D1, plays it, uh, plays at Detroit, University of Detroit, or I guess they call it Detroit Mercy now, but, uh, but yeah, University of Detroit, opponent, gonna get back to the expressive iteration, well, it looks like this egg flip is happening, I mean, we can skyclave it away, hopefully, well, they played the land, huh, oh, we draw another land, well, go to combat, attack, yeah, this is the problem. This is the problem. Even with the... Even with this ley line out, our opponent's still going to flip the egg and still going to wreck us. Is it true that sports is a ridiculously fast way into college? Like, grades don't even matter at some point. Uh... Maybe. Like... <sighs> oh... That might be true to some extent. Like, I would say we're getting so wrecked. I can't believe this worked out this way. Like, oh, this deck's so good. I imagine this is it deck is probably just like the the top deck in historic by a by a pretty big margin. I don't know. What is your impression of historic? So I think like people who are insanely good at sports probably uh probably get a bit of a pass in American colleges. On the other hand, uh I don't think that uh, just playing sports is necessarily going to get you that is necessarily going to get you that uh that same pass. Oh god. All right, so our opponent's been very successful at drawing Archmage's charms. I think that's that is 3 of them. Jeez, um Wow, his ley line wasn't even... Man, we cannot beat this deck. I feel like we... I feel like we have very little chance against this deck. I don't know how much more we could hope for than this, and this isn't even... I mean, maybe it's just a weird draw that our opponent drew every... Every counter, every op, but... Uh, do you complete your college education, or did your magic su success pull you out early? No, I got a, I got a bachelor's degree. I did, I was considering going on, but, uh, but then I started doing magic content, so I, I was considering trying to go to grad school, but it worked out that I really like magic, and it worked out that, uh, Goldfish was starting out, and Richard asked me to do content for them, and it kind of just went from there, so, but I do have a, I do have a, a bachelor's degree. I don't know. I think unlikely I go back to grad school at this point. I'm just uh, just gonna play magic forever. <laughs> I don't know. There's some stories about uh, how how college sports certainly has problems. Like there was a big scandal with uh, North Carolina, I think, university a while ago, where they basically had fake classes for <laughs> for athletes that didn't really require them to do work. So there certainly are cases at like the highest, highest level where players go to college and basically just play sports and don't actually do any, don't actually do any, uh, any school work. But I don't think that's true in general. Like a lot of places, play, uh, students are relatively normal students. Like my, my two siblings that are playing like lower level, um, they're definitely just normal students who, you know, ride a bus to games because they really enjoy, they in real they really enjoy playing, you know, basketball or whatever. So, but they're just, you know, regular normal college students who are doing all the work everyone else is. Um, my degrees in uh, I ended up being in psychology. I bounced around a lot. I went to I did creative writing for a while. I did business for a while and ended up with a psychology degree eventually. I think if I was getting my degree now, I would love to go for economics or something, uh, data analysis, something more along those lines because I find that really interesting. But uh, but yeah, I've always been more of a more of a humanities more of a humanities kind of guy. But I took like a lot of. I was a creative major, right? Uh, I was a creative writing major for a while. Uh, English major at one point, business for a for a bit, and then ended up with psychology. But yeah, I think I I enjoy the I enjoy data analysis, and because of magic and like MTG finance stuff, kind of actually enjoy. Oh, is the Meat Hook Master gonna gonna be good? Maybe we can put a land to the bottom. Yeah, let's put. Let's try that. All right, let's let's try it. Try it, go. 
about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, I feel like... I don't know. That I can't think of much that I learned in college. Like, I can't think of much that I learned in college that specifically applies to what I do now. At the same time, I really think... I, I just really enjoy... I really enjoy learning things. Like, I was always someone who, I guess, was it. Even though I wasn't your traditional nerd growing up and, like, you know, reading comic books and stuff because my upbringing was unique in a lot of ways. But uh, but I was definitely always someone who just really enjoyed ner uh, learning. So I think I'm a, kind of a very much a nerd in a lot of ways. So I, I just like learning things. You could throw me in college with essentially any, well, probably not science. I, I do not enjoy science classes those were the those were the classes that killed me but uh outside of like biology and stuff like that like i just enjoy i enjoy learning things uh so i i would be fine with any major really in a lot of ways big wit bunny soldier and f rosec welcome to the fishbowl thank you so much for your subscription big soup cheer for you thank you thank you thank you well hmm Oh, I wish we had more mana. This is a, what, mystical dispute? Actually, let's just do this. Moonblast Cleric. Oh, these mana problems. Get a Omen of the Sea to see if we can draw some manas. If you went to college or are currently in college, what uh, what did you go for? Science is the most fun thing to learn. Uh, not for me. I think that was also a part of... <laughs> just not something I uh, really learned much. Oh, no. That's not even close to lands. Oh, no. Mana screw into oblivion. This is not good. This is not good. Uh, econ and civil engineering. That sounds very interesting. Nursing school. Sweet. Biology. Oh. See, I could not, I don't think I could, I don't think I could be a bio major. I don't think I could hack it. That is the one, the one area I don't think I could hack it. Music is sweet. That I, I would definitely, I hung out with a lot of music majors. I never was a music major, but because of playing bands and playing music, I hung out with a lot of, uh, a lot of them. A doctor in brewing. <laughs> if only that was an option. Well, Hinterland Harbor. Go to combat. Uh Attack you. Opponent takes it. Chupacabra. Get rid of the hermit. I mean, we're trying to manipulate ourselves into a position where we can cast this Miog Massacre and sweep away everything through our opponent's counters. I don't know if it's going to work. We're kind of winning the race. I would love to get down this cinematic incarnation. It would be so good. Philo oh, I love taking philosophy courses. I took several philosophy courses and I enjoyed, I enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed all of them. Philosophy is really interesting to me too. Opponent, smoldering egg. Untap land goes attacking. Does this mean they drill like a negate? I'll go to combat. Attack you. Opponent blocks. Down to eight. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, we're putting up a good fight for having such mana issues. <sighs> yeah, this was the plan. Although now I'm wondering if we, if wrathing away Arbord is a bad thing. I think we still got to go for it because we could have just bind, tried to binding the egg and attacked. Like, is there a chance we win this race? That's the that's the real question. Like, should we be trying to binding and just racing? The problem is we should have thought this through before we attacked because <laughs> it would have been so much better to blow up this egg and actually get through the damage. Like, that would have been, that would have been the best. Oh, Seance is super fun. They have anger. That's true. 
But we were at Fairboard, and then they get back Phoenix, get back Hermit. All right, we'll just do it. We'll try it. I don't know why they played this land untapped. It makes me nervous that they actually have a, a hard counter. Okay, consider. Oh, no. Okay. So we have the board. Drain you. Gain you. We could still use mana. I mean, if our opponent ever taps out, we get down this enigmatic incarnation. Then we actually are in kind of a kind of a sweet spot. Even just getting down this Archon would be so good. We just have so many mana troubles about it. Dragon Rage Shadowler. Passes. Well, play the land. Now the time. Oh, they have Mystical Dispute. Ah. Huh. I'll play the buy dig. Oh, Archmage's charm off the top. Scries to nowhere. About it adapts. Hey, what's up, Winslow? How are you? Hits us down to 13. Now we will play the land. Oh, this is the worst. This counters a wreck at us. Well, uh, so we can resolve Moonbus Cleric, but we're just gonna we're gonna die. Ugh, what a tough matchup for our deck. This matchup seems so difficult, so so tough. Hmm. Seance is a really fun card. I would I would be down with the Seance reprint in standard. It was never good in standard. I don't think it's broken. It. Could probably be an uncommon. Maybe, it, well, is it even good in limited? I was going to say maybe it'd be too good in limited, but I'm not even sure it'd be too good in limited. Uh, tough, tough spot. Well, all right. Incarnation. I mean, I think we just got to try, try to play through it. Resolving the Archon is probably the most important thing at this point. All right, counter number 40. Opponent surveils to the top. Undeps. And. I don't know how. I wonder how we never play these top tier decks. I feel like every time I play against this deck, I think, how does this deck. How is this deck not the best deck in the format by a huge margin? Do we have enough wolves to play Historic Wolf Tribal with Tosimir, Nightpick, Ambusher, and Tovalar? Uh, I mean, definitely can play Werewolves. Oh, no. They ran a random arc light on the top of their deck, and they're getting back two of them. Oh, that's game. Well, that's super unfortunate. Yeah. I mean, how is this... How is this arc light deck not the top deck in the format by, by a huge margin? Yeah, I mean, I think you could definitely play werewolves in Historic. I don't know if they'd be good in Historic, but you could definitely play them. I don't know about just wolves. Because food exists? Do you think, is food better than, is food better than the Arclight deck? Like, does, you think food's better than Arclight? I mean, you got Dragon Rage Chandler. You got most of the modern and legacy playable. You have cards that aren't even legal in uh, in modern, like Faithless Looting. You got Consider. It feels like it should just be a dominant deck. All right, we'll keep it. No incarnation, unfortunately. Opponent. <laughs> Nine lives combo. I mean, nine lives is sweet. It is definitely super against odds and fringe, though. Yeah, Shaman is super fun. Shaman is probably my favorite historic deck, honestly. About it. Thinking very slowly. Um, how's the deck been so far? I mean, it uh, it has struggled with uh, beating Phoenix. It has done well in non-Phoenix matchups. But, uh, but Phoenix has been pretty obnoxious. 
Do you think Simic Flash is viable in Historic? Seems like it should be viable issue at least. Unfit Patriot, welcome to the fishbowl for the 52nd month. Thank you for your subscription. Oh my god, again. Big CMJ for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Whew. Well, yeah, we might have to switch decks. We just, uh, this matchup is, I think, pretty close to unwinnable for our deck, unfortunately. And apparently it is very popular at gold. I built a mono white Aegir deck with Thalion or Lieutenant Risa Historic Editions. Yeah, th uh, mono white humans or some version of humans I think is pretty good. About it going to consider. Mills and Opt. Well, come on, Enigmatic Incarnation, or a way to find it. <laughs> Untap land for our opponent. And. Unholy Heat. I mean. Every card that our opponent's played so far is a modern or even legacy staple. <laughs> the power level of this format is uh, definitely increased. Well, go, go, three, two. Pass the turn. Did Demolich, uh, Demolich not end up being good enough for Historic? Uh, yeah, I think it's a little tricky to trigger in Historic when there's not really free spells in Historic. Demolich has ended up being very good in Modern, but in Modern you got Manamorphose, you got Gutshot, you got Lavadar, you get a ton of free ways to reduce its cost. Historic, everything costs mana, outside of like Pact of Negation or whatever, Force of, uh... Uh, outside of Pact and Negation, but basically everything costs mana. So, uh, so I think that is the reason Demolich, when you actually have to cast like four or five plus mana worth of spells to make it work, it's a lot tougher than when you just get to uh, sling free spells and play like five of them from your or, <laughs> five of them from your graveyard. <laughs> but yeah, so I think that's uh, I think that's kind of the issue in Historic. Not that it wouldn't be okay, but it's just not as... I think it's not as good as the other options that do come back for free. Hey, what's up, Alley Cat? We're playing some Enigmatic Incarnation at the moment. Dragon Rage Channeler. And a tap land. Uh, instance in land. Well, play in the land. Go to combat. Attack, yeah. Bone it takes it. Yaria. Blink and blank. Well. Okay. Get rid of the RC. Get back our mana. Well, maybe there, maybe there are ways we can beat this deck. There might possibly be some ways. Do you think the Alchemist Gambit plus Mana Form Dragon will be a problem? <sighs> I'm definitely worried about the fact that... We already have an is it deck built around casting and copying an extra turns. So that's the best deck in the format. That's what worries me about Alchemist Gambit. Um, there's just such a natural built home for it that's already at the top of the meta. It makes me worried that it might be too good. Uh, it's definitely worse than Elrond's Epiphany. I do think that mana form sharing again is a, a ridiculous payoff for for a. Uh, a extra turn deck like it's insane you get a hasty six six seven seven flyer like you don't need many extra turns when your dragon's coming along with that hasty attacker that's the card i worry will power up is it dragons or the is it epiphany decks even more but uh as far as the extra turn spell itself i think it's probably if anything like two extra extra turn spells in the deck so more uh consistency rather than more raw power another egg Rallier. Hmm. I'll go to combat. Attack you. Attack you. Aw. Oh, we're so close to lethal. Now let's get in with the Arion. Is there any way they're going to flip the egg so they can get back the ox? We're like a damage short from winning with this Mihook Massacre. 
if we attack with everything, our stuff dies. Yeah, we'll hit you with the Arion. Play the land, pass the turn. About it, adapts. I mean, Historic seems like it's in a pretty good place at the moment. Has there ever been two or more extra turn spells in Standard? Good question. Not recently. If there were ever two extra turn spells in Standard, I think, uh, I think that it was a long time ago. I can't remember a time when we had two. If, the, if there were, they were, like, really janky ones. Maybe there was a time when we had one real one in one, like, chance for glory effect or something, but... Halana and Elena, yeah! Oh, we, we haven't talked enough about spoilers. Halana and Elena is interesting. I actually think Halana and Elena is a, is a pretty good card. Uh, I think it's a pretty good card. Like... It's technically putting four power five toughness on the battlefield because you get those counters on your first combat. And then the next turn, it's pretty sweet because you can haste in some big five drop. It does have to beat out Azekas Chariot, theoretically. It's got to beat out Moonville, uh, Moonville Regent. It's got to beat out the new Mana Form Dragon. Like, there's a lot in the mono red or mono green or gruel four drop slot. So that's, I guess, my concern is there's a lot of things that it has to overcome to be played. But I think it's got a, I think it's got a shot to be playable. There's, there's at least a chance. Like hasting in your stuff is a pretty frightening. Oh, what did they? Oh, another unholy heat. Unholy Heat is so good. I mean, probably better than Fatal Push. Opponent gets back in Arclight. Passes. Who? Well, go to combat. Attack, attack. About it. Yeah, we just can't beat this deck. We just cannot beat this deck. No matter how good or bad our draws are, we just, it doesn't happen. Stuff dies. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, meat hook. Wipe the board. But the arc light comes back. I wonder if there's something we could add to this deck that would improve that would improve this matchup. Because we are playing this matchup constantly and we are not winning it at all. Opponent. Bard class will be tier one next season. I mean Bard class is a really sweet card. I don't know how it's tier one in standard though. I don't think there's enough good legends in standard. Opponent faithless looting. Working on getting back those arc lights. Oh, we know they have this. Oh, they have this ox of a gonus too. I don't even know if Ooze does it. Like we've lost to this with a ley line in play. We still like the matchup just so bad that even if we have a ley line, we still lose. Pony considers, gets back arc light, surveils. Uh huh. About it. I mean, it's helpful, but we, uh, like I said, we had Lane Line of the Void and still, still lost this matchup. That's how far away from being good it feels. Um,. What do you think about Jeskai Moonblade in the modern meta? Um, I haven't really played it. I don't even know if I've actually played against it, but I think Blood Moon is good and Blade decks are good. So I can see, yeah, they found another one. I can see on paper how it could be a good choice. Well, can we top deck something? Well, it would have been good a few million turns ago, Scarab God. About it. Untaps. Oh, that would have been another Dragon Rage. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this takes so... Out of our losses, I think 
There was a one that came to the punt, which was your your fault, Chad. I'm still holding you to that. Other than that, every one of our losses has been to Arclight Phoenix. Every single one. About it. Passes. This opponent has two blockers. Has one blocker? Oh, okay. Well, uh, well, I guess our game plan is get back a Skyclave as a zombie. Eat the Dragon Rage Channeler. Ah. Huh. Did our opponent throw us this game? Desperation opt. Well, they get double surveil because Dragon Rage Channeler is insane. Ooh, 5 0 with angels. Mono white angels. That sounds sweet. No, that was a. We've played this. We've played against this half of our matches. <laughs> we've played against Phoenix three times. Um, so that was a. That was a previous. A previous uh, match versus uh, Arclight. About it. Mills, Mills. Leaves a card on top. About it. Loses their Dragon Rage Channeler. They found Unholy Heat, must be. About it. Wow. <laughs> Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, I mean that. Still does it. Hmm. Sure. Oh, boy. They didn't have it either. They surveilled into it. We untap. We draw a destiny spinner that does nothing. And we scoop it up. Thinking about buying Bird Tribal EDH and paper, very cheap. Uh, did Richard win when he played it on Clash? How big Bird State? Um, so I think that that Bird Tribal, Richard does do well with it. Although that might partly be because it's Richard more than more than the deck being good, because it's not very powerful. Richard is really good at it politicking his way out of the limelight. Uh, and then sneaking in and winning the game after other people kill each other. So I, I would keep that in mind. Like, I think it's a fun budget deck to put together, but it might be one of those decks that Richard can win with that other people can't actually win with. What do you think about Unholy Heat? Do you think Unholy Heat is... We've, we've asked this about Prismatic Ending, too. Like, I almost wonder if those cards are healthy. Like, uh, Unholy Heat seems a little color pie breaky. I don't know. Is magic all blending together? Are the colors all blending together? That's something I've been wondering about lately. Like, Unholy Heat... Unholy Heat is... It gets around red's drawback so much. Like, one of the downsides of playing a red deck is your removal is normally damage-based. So... So you you struggle with certain things like you're not really good with dealing with big creatures necessarily uh, necessary. But if you have a one mana spell that deals forty damage, then there's not really any there's not really any any drawback to it. It's essentially just a essentially just you know a one mana terminate. Like it's a it's a hard removal spell. So I wonder, I don't know. Sometimes it seems like all the colors are blending together. And it's, uh, I mean, there's also Triumgo. Uh, plus, we also have uh, all the other stuff, like, uh, you know, black killing enchantments and blue exiling artifacts. So that probably plays into the, plays into the, the fact that things sometimes feel uh, blendy together-y. I don't play the land past the turn. We got our namesake enigmatic incarnation, which is our best card. Is there any miraculous way that we actually get on the battlefield? That is the next question. Opponent gets in with the Dragon Rage Chandler, hits us. Down to just play, just play seven toughness creatures. Got him. We got him. 
opponent. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm on board with more good removal in general. I don't know. Is it a color pie break? I think that's my question. Is it a color pie break? Let's say there's a one mana spell that says deal 20 damage to a creature. Like, is that a red card or is that just a black card <laughs> that has red words on it? At some point, at some point, I think that's a, a fair question to ask. A bonus. Expressive iteration. Gonna draw some cards. Soul Guide Lantern could help for his Arc Light. The other matchups is just draw a card. Yeah, I mean, Graveyard Hate, probably somewhat helpful. We do have Ley Lines. Not always enough, though. A color pie will inevitably bend more and more. Looking at fighting games, it's getting to the point where every character has the tools for every matchup. Yeah, maybe that's what Wizards is trying to do with, uh, with Magic. I don't know. I don't know if that's a good thing. Or if you want you want colors to have drawbacks and upsides to incentivize people to play different colors rather than rather than just play the same ones over and over again. Opponent consider is going to surveil. Well, we'll see. We will see, we will see. Opponent, do they turn out their Dragon Rage Channeler with this surveil? Actually they shouldn't be able to. Mills of land. Yeah, I don't think Meat Hook on one is very, very appealing. Mills a sorcery, draws a card, hits us for one. All right, well, we untap. We play the land. Enigmatic Incarnation. Sag the Omen. Get a Renegade Rallier. Get back the Omen. One land to the bottom, one to the top. Pass the turn opponent attempts. Okay, we got the incarnation now, which is huge, huge, huge. That is what we needed. That is what we needed. Is there anything green doesn't have at this point? Green is pretty good at pretty much everything. All right, more more spoilers. More spoilers. We haven't talked about enough spoiler cards, I don't think. What do you think about Dal House of Horrors? Do you think Dal House of Horrors can be a playable standard card? Five mana artifact, pay one, exile a creature from your graveyard, make a token that's a copy of it, except it's a zero zero construct with the Urza Saga, like gets plus one plus one for each uh, construct you have. So similar to Urza Saga, except that triggers on any artifact. And it gains haste until end of turn, activate only as a sorcery. Can we have a sweet reanimator deck in standard or is Dal House of Horrors just too expensive to matter? That, I think that's the question. Five mana to get going. One to reanimate every turn is nice, although it's uh, it's only a one one. The first construct's a one one. The next one's a two two. It takes a while to get going, although once it gets going, it does seem like it could be a pretty powerful. Opponent, unholy heating, trying to avoid timing out, timing out, going attacking for one, hitting us. Well, we draw land. Play the land. Opponent's got two mana up. How do we do this? We can get a three drop. Um, hmm. I would like this binding to come down. Binding would be great. Dallas is fine, but there's a problem with playing grindy decks with combo control in the format. Yeah. Yoda man, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super cheer for you. First construct is at least a two two because it counts the Dell house. Wait, 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 wait. Doesn't it say plus one, plus one for each construct you control? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a little different than a construct. It actually grows based on the constructs you control, not the number of artifacts you control. So you can't play a bunch of ornithopters and make it a 5-5 five five or something. So unless you have another construct on the battlefield, it is going to start as a 1-1. As a one -one. Yeah, no, you're, no worries, because I actually overlooked that at first, too, because it is formatted slightly different than other versions of this we've seen in the past. All right, let's... Oh, you know what? Let's just binding. Do you have a counter? No. So kill the smoldering egg. Go to our end step. Sack. Hmm. Probably just the binding. 
Okay, this might be the one. This might be the one where we get to take this uh, deck down. What's your favorite card so far? What do you think of the new Sorin? Um, favorite card so far is Zombie Monogana. Do oh boy, it's gonna take me forever to remember all these card names. Uh, do we just want Yarion? Yeah, let's just get Yarion. Yarion draw cards fine. We can get Scarab God later theoretically. Uh, but the Zombie Zombie Panther Monogon is my favorite card so far. The new Sorin, I think it's got a shot. I mean, it has a plus ability that draws cards. Unholy Heat is just so insane. It is such an insane Magic the Gathering removal spell. Although having good removal is nice. Um, I think the new Soren, it protects itself. It generates card advantage. Its ultimate is game-winning on some board states. So I think that Soren, it could have a shot. Again, so much of... So one thing I've been doing this spoiler season is... I think I've been evaluating cards relatively optimistically. Uh, I've been evaluating cards based on how I'm hoping standard ends up, let's say. I think one of the issues with a lot of cards is our current meta right now is basically you play Epiphany. If you're not playing Epiphany, you either got to be as aggressive as possible to try to race Epiphany, or you gotta be uh, like a Demir control deck and try to counter your way through Epiphany and discard your way through Epiphany. What has really not existed if you look at our current standard format, and I think, I think the metagame page probably bears this out, but what really doesn't exist, for the most part is, you know, a lot of competitive mid-range style decks. So the top of the meta is, is it Epiphany decks? Super aggressive mono white, super aggressive mono green. Uh, the grindy go long plan, like the the Golgari control, sack my eye twitch, blood on the snow, draw some treasures. People play those decks, but those decks have just not really proven themselves to be competitive. So that's what makes me worried about a lot of the cards that I love the most from this set, uh, including including Necro Duality. Like, this is a card that's slow and grindy. It's not gonna win you the game right away. Same with like Soren the Mirthless. Soren, the repeatable value over the course of several turns is really, really good. How does that work in a, wow, so many, so many incarnations. How does that work in a world, uh, in our current standard meta? That's a, that's another question that I, I'm not really sure what the answer to that is, honestly. Brain Maggot, take a peek. Take a finale of promise. Play a land. Enigmatic incarnation. Trigger, trigger. Tag the omen. Get a. Huh. So if we get a Skyclave, they're definitely going to anger. Yeah, we'll get Moonbless Cleric. Moonbless Cleric. Tutor us up a treacherous blessing. Hmm. We're gonna decline. We're gonna decline. I'm worried about getting Scarab God and getting exiled. So yeah, so we'll have to see how the meta shakes out. I'm really, really, really hopeful that some of those mid-range decks are, are going to be able to make a comeback. And some of those cards are going to be competitive. Because those are some of the cards I'm most excited about. Like the Necro Dualities of the world. So hopefully that's, that's where the meta ends up. So I, I'm remaining very hopeful. And I think it will. Oh, actually, we didn't talk about this card. I gotta... Hey, what's up, Phantom? How are you? I gotta ask you about Curse of Hospitality. I know we've talked before about who plays Commander, and I know most of you, I know most of you actually play Commander. My question is, how busted is Curse of Hospitality? Like, I actually think there's a, a question slash argument about whether this card is too, is just too good. Is just straight up too good for the Commander format. In Standard, I think it's fine. I mean, I think this is the best curse ever printed, but I feel like... I feel like in Commander, you just get someone murdered. 
Like, I feel like, I don't know, at least in my playgroups, maybe this, I feel like you can play in every deck. And I feel like, think of the Commander Clash pay group. That's who I play with the most. If I put this on a player, that player is almost certainly going to get murdered. Like, people attack each other to get a single treasure off of Curse of Opulence. People are going to really attack the person that has this curse on them because it's so much value it's a ridiculous amount of value so i'm actually like slightly concerned that it could actually just be too good or like too unfun but uh but i don't know maybe maybe i'll be wrong but i feel like it's just gonna get someone murdered i feel like once this come down the person that you put it on dies in like two turns and I don't know if that's exactly a fun game of Commander for most players. Uh, I mean, Lind Curses is, is sweet. Lind at least lets you put it on someone else. I mean, I, I love the card. Like, I think the card is, uh, is incredibly strong. My only worry is that it's maybe too strong. Well, blow up the Dragon Rage Channeler. Just keep on killing. I mean, when we have two enigmatic incarnations going, if we don't beat this deck this time, then then I think, I mean, if this isn't enough, then nothing's ever going to be enough. The thing is, our opponent could still just, could still just lay line back a bunch of arc lights and smash us to death. <laughs> I mean, so here, here would be my thinking. Maybe, and maybe it would be too bad this way. What if Curse of Hospitality... Why is it so big? This is a huge version. What if Curse of Hospitality drew you one card? Because way, uh, the way it is now, it almost turns it almost turns all of your creatures into Ragavans or all of the table's creatures, except for one player. You don't get the treasure, but still, it, it doesn't just incentivize you. Like Curse of Opulence, it incentivizes you to attack the player who's cursed with a creature. So you're like, oh, Tomer's got the curse. I'll hit Tomer for one, and then I can send the rest at, you know, whatever, Krim, because he's Krim, and he's going to counter my stuff. Or Richard, you know, he always wins. But you only really got to attack them with one thing. This kind of incentivizes you to smash all of your stuff into the curse player, and I feel like whoever gets cursed is going to die within, like, once or twice around the table, unless they're super far ahead. I mean, I do think it's going to be fun, and I plan on putting in a lot of decks, but... I almost wonder if it ends up too too strong. Do most commander games end with an arch enemy anyways? Throw it on the player and probably nothing changes. However, you can put it on a underdog to exploit and probably feels terrible for the first player. Um, I mean, I don't know if, I mean, someone often becomes an arch enemy. That's true. Huh, let's cycle this Triome, I think. Cycle the Triome. Draw more lands. Hmm. We're running out of stuff to get here. Play the land. Destiny Spinner. Renegade Rallier. Sack Destiny Spinner. Get Glass Pool Mimic. Copy Rallier. Rallier. Get back Destiny Spinner. Incarnation Sack Incarnation. Get Scarab God. Pass the turn. Darkwing Duck. Welcome to the fishbowl for the 23rd month. Thank you for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. And we got a new donation from Chuck the Yak on Commander Clash. You uh, said something like you're practicing to be a daddy already. Was he just, uh, Krim said something like he's practicing to be a daddy already. Was he just bantering? Or is there a something about your new household that you haven't told us? Oh, well, um, so uh, I don't remember that, honestly. Could he have been referring to Bear? <laughs> I did kind of become the 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 daddy of a of a puppy recently, but uh, but now there's there's no there's no exciting news about a about a real human baby in the future or anything like that. So now I would tell you, you would be the first to know. Well, one of the one of the first to know at least if uh, if there was big exciting news like that. So so no, but uh, thank you so much for the donation, Chuck the Yak. Uh, he might have just been referring to to good old Bear. Oh, Bear. Bear, bear, bear. I was trying to record the daily spoiler video today. 
And Bear, he gets the puppy energy. He wants to be in the office with me. He gets the puppy energy. When he gets the puppy energy, he chews on everything. He's bumping into the mic, so it's making this kind of like, you know, this this noise, and it's just not really working. So I said, "All right, Bear, I'm gonna put you. I'm gonna put you outside. I'm gonna close the door. It'll be fine. Just be good. Just be good for like. Give me give me like 45 minutes to record this video, and then when I'm editing it, you can come in. It'll be cool. So I put him out there, and. Uh, of course, he immediately proceeds to eat a roll of, uh, of toilet paper that he got out of the bathroom somehow. So now there's just like shreds of toilet paper everywhere, which are going to be really difficult to clean up. He drives me absolutely, absolutely insane, that puppy. But uh, I love him. He's, <laughs> he's, uh, <laughs> he's, he's cute, at least. I'll give him that. <laughs> What's beer? Okay, so uh, two, two internet cables that connect the internet to my computers. Uh, two cell phone. I didn't have a cell phone charger for a while. <clears throat> He's eating through two cell phone chargers. He is eating. Oh my god! I think that's all the wires. He's eating multiple rolls of like toilet paper and and paper towel if he finds them. He has. I don't even know if I can show you. There's a. There's this box here that I was had some of my stuff I was moving in. You can see the the bear marks. All around there, he's he's tries to eat my magic cards. I have some oh zero lands, but a ley line. I don't think we can keep that. Two lands plus a ley line that we will keep. So yeah, he he will eat he will eat absolutely anything, anything. He is. I mean, I I have very much enjoyed having Bear around, but who he uh, he is a handful on occasion. He's normally really chill. It depends on. It really just depends on his energy level. We have some days where like yesterday I was doing spoilers. He just came in like chilled in the office with me. I was doing videos. He was just like, you know, chewing on his bones, being super cool. But then some days he's got the, just the extreme puppy energy and he goes wild. <laughs> I really would like him not to learn to eat magic cards if I had a choice. <laughs> I've still been, I've been trying to organize some of my cards and get things set up since, uh, since moving and so there's cards kind of scattered around baby proof the house yeah I, I probably should do more of that oh did i miss i think i missed another donation oh my apologies the juice caboose five dollar donation i'm sorry i got distracted by bear stories i started playing paper commander with the Decronic Rage Precon, and it's really fun. I'm looking for more thirty to fifty dollar decks to play. Ooh, well, that Juice Caboose. I have a a recommendation for you, which is uh, over on MTGGoldfish.com. There's a person who uh, recently was unfired named Tomer, who who just so happens to write budget commander articles with decks that are around $50 on a pretty regular basis. So I would check out the budget commander series over on mtdgoldfish.com. Probably exactly the kind of stuff you're looking for. Like sweet fun decks that actually when Tomer brings them to commander clash often end up smacking us. Uh, so they're actually pretty, uh, pretty playable too. So, so check out the, <laughs> Oh, that meme, that meme gets people every time. No, it's, it's been a running joke. It's been a running joke. Tomer is not on this season of Commander Clash just because you only have four players. So we kind of rotate through the crew and uh, Tomer's never taken a season off. So when Tomer first left, so many people in the, in the comments to the video thought he'd been fired or something so we've just kind of been playing it up for the last couple of months because i think it's funny but no he's he's definitely not fired he's just he's taking a break from commander clash and working on other other content and videos this season <laughs> i just like i just like getting a rise out of people sometimes a, a little a little trolling <laughs> Also, other precons are good too. Like Wizards has done a pretty good job with a lot of Commander precons. Not a good job of putting them on Magic Online, unfortunately. Oh, I was gonna ask you. So, so chat, I need your opinion on something. Uh, we got a couple of weeks until we have new standard. I think the eleventh. So, so we got a little bit uh, as far as streams before we get new standard to play with. Are you interested at all in any limited streams in the near future? We have. On Magic Online, 
Yeah, let's see if we can get rid of this egg. We have on Magic Online uh, Vintage Cube, and then also starting tomorrow, they have Modern Horizons coming back. Modern Horizons 2. So I don't know if you're, you're at all interested in Limited. We could do a Limited stream either either Thursday or next Tuesday before we get new stuff, new uh, new standard stuff to play with uh, next Thursday. So, so let me know. Uh, there's still more like modern. I've been focused a lot on modern on the on the YouTube. So there's a lot more modern that'll be coming up on the YouTube over the next couple of weeks. Uh, gonna do some more legacy at some point. So I don't know. Maybe we do a limited stream sometime. It is it is fun to play some some cube draft on occasion. What are the sets? Uh, so vintage cube. Oh, vintage cube is my favorite limited. Cube is a. Uh, is kind of a self-constructed limited format. So it, it's basically the best cards in all of Magic. Like the best, most busted cards are in the Vintage Cube. Uh, so so yeah, it's not a real set so much as a, a set that someone has designed, really. Hmm. All right. Hermit. Opponent passes. So this can counter things. Well... Scarab God. Take one. See, we're going to lose with this lane lane. I still feel like we're losing this game with a lane lane out. <laughs> well, your opponent's skill can counter their way through this. Even with us shutting down their graveyard uh, synergies, I still don't even know if we're favored. Like, I still feel like we're losing. Opponent going to opt, get a counter off the egg. Like, isn't it crazy that this deck can survive can survive a lane line on the battlefield. Oh, I feel like lane line should just be auto win against this deck, but it's definitely not. Yeah, I mean, we play like 90% constructed, 95% constructed, some very, very high percentage. Every once in a while we play a bit of limited, but we play by far, far, far more, uh, more constructed. That is, that is the main focus. Do you play any other decks in this? Uh, do you play against any other decks in this? Yeah, seriously. Uh, we have played against a couple other ones, but we have played against Is It Phoenix way more than anything else uh, today. Just one after another. I think we've half of our matches today have been against Is It Phoenix for some reason. Which is annoying because I feel like it's our worst or one of our worst matchups. Found it. Land. Goes attacking. I mean, if the Scarab God lives, we can upkeep, reanimate Skyclave and eat the Ash Mouth. We are down to 14. Like, this is a clock. Opponent. Thinking. They could also have, like, Unholy Heat, Shockwa Dragon, another spell. So, oh, no. Soul God. Oh, my goodness. We're going to lose this game. No matter what we do, no matter what we do, we get wrecked. You know they got a counter. You know they got a handful of counters. So we can't get down any of our good cards. Oh, this is so frustrating. <laughs> oh, not again. I mean, it might be the most common archetype, but 50% is a, a pretty high percentage. If any deck is 50% of a meta, it should uh, it should be banned out of the meta. I mean, I don't think this deck is 50% of the meta, but it's been 50% of our meta today. Casting creatures, we just we just die to Ashmouth, though. Like, it doesn't... Like, we play a creature, we play a creature, they don't do anything. Our opponent just casts some spells, attacks with Ashmouth, and we die... But Incarnation's almost 100% going to get countered. You know, there's no, there's no good options. Boy, we just, no matter what we do, like, we talked about this earlier. Like, this is the second game we've had a ley line and still didn't even come kind of close to beating the Phoenix deck. Opponent. I mean, in those games, our opponent has also just drawn an absurd number of counters, which is pretty frustrating. But, yeah, I mean, that, that does it. <laughs> Again. Yeah, I think that expressive iteration might be a mistake about it. Uh, there's no creatures to make zombies with. And our opponent also, yeah, I mean, chain this together. There's no creatures to exile to make zombies with. And our opponent has graveyard eight, so we can't even do it. Uh, even get creatures in the graveyard. Opponent scries to the top. Another spell. Yeah, so I think we're just literally dead. 
Wow, we even had the ley line, and it just wasn't even, wasn't even close. Finds a brazen borrower, bounces there. All right, sure. Well, all right. Oh, that's frustrating. I really wish we had more diverse matchups. I guess we maybe we just got to play a real deck to get out of gold. I mean, isn't Leyline and Recipes exactly the same effect? Like exactly? Why would why would Rest in Peace be be a better hate card than Leyline? I am I am confused. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, this has been an issue in Historic for a while. Not saying that the Is It Phoenix deck is an issue at the moment, but Is It has dominated. Is It has been the best deck in Historic. Some blue, uh, blue red X deck has been the best deck in Historic through multiple bannings ever since Wizard printed Expressive Iteration. They also gave it an absurd amount of support. Uh, putting brainstorm in the format putting on holy heat in the format putting dragon rage channeler in the format putting faithful suiting in the format so they also gave it a ridiculous amount of support with their supplemental products but uh but yeah i mean it is i don't know it would be it would be cool to have a another deck at the top of the format someday just to see what i just want to know what it's like what does historic feel like when blue red deck is not the best deck in the format <laughs> blue red x is not the best deck in the format about it. Lane Lane doesn't exile graveyard late game. That's true. And what's uh hmm. Yeah, let's just brain mag it. See what our opponent's got in hand. Get rid of the Coco if they have one. I mean, I feel like we're just gonna stomp this deck. Take the Coco. Huh. Land untapped. Moonblast cleric. <laughs> life is life is so much better when we're not playing against Is it with this deck. <laughs> Suddenly life is good. Moonblast cleric. Enigmatic incarnation. Start the party. Pass the turn. About it. Scoops it up. Are we done? Are we done already? Have there really been no new spoilers this afternoon? What do you think of wizard spoiler pacing? <laughs> That's something we've been talking about. I know it probably doesn't matter as much to to people who don't make content. Maybe it matters more to content producers. But uh, the spoiler pacing has been interesting. Some days we get like a million cards. Other days it feels like we get none. Yeah, let's just, we'll pay the one. Kill that as percent, no. Play the tap land, pass. Well, actually, smack you with the moon best cleric, pass the turn. It feels like, like yesterday, our spoiler video was like an hour, and we had like 30 cards to talk about. Today, our spoiler video was like 25 minutes, and we had, you know, many fewer cards. It's, uh, it's spaced out sometimes a little bit strangely. Big days and little days. Well, all right, now we get to do fun things. Uh, enigmatic Incarnation. And our opponent scoops it up. Ooh, does not scoop it up. Interesting. Archon. <laughs> opponent going to tap a Moonblast Cleric. That is a nice attempt. We will play the tap lad. We will pass the turd. We will sack the Oath of Kaya get a four drop that will be a i guess gandhi what do you got going on over there green white humans bonus exit clue sure and huh i'll take thrabes we could use a clue or two about it not following what's going on in the game right now. So, Enigmatic Incarnation, the card we're built around, lets us sack an enchantment to grab a creature from our library with enchantments mana value plus one. So that's what this deck is trying to do is, ooh, this is this is kind of sweet. So we get to Moonblast Cleric, and then Omen of the Sea to draw what we tutor up. So that's, it's kind of like this weird creature slash enchantment birthing pod play pattern. Get a treacherous blessing, omen of the sea. Also so good. 
Omen of the Sea draws us treacherous blessing, makes us an Archon token. Oh, 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 life without is it Phoenix is so, is so sweet. <laughs> so much sweeter for this deck, treacherous blessing. Run that out. Draw three cards. Yes, please. Mega token. Sounds good. Ugh. <laughs> three lands. Okay. Uh, play a tap. Uh, you know, play an untap land. Play a three, but inspector. Make a clue. Lose some life. Gain it back with the Archon. Go to combat. I mean, this is kind of insane. This is kind of insane. Opponent. Taps down our stuff. We will get in with our creatures. We will hit you. End of turn. Omen. Sack it. Tutor up a Renegade Rallier. Get back the Omen. Make a token. Draw a card. The value loops are so sweet. Isolated chapel to the bottom. Draw the glass pool mimic. Pass the turn. What do you say, humans? What do you say? I want to build a pioneer deck. Guys in my LGS and it... Wait. I want to build a pioneer deck. Guys in my LGS and get it going. And I think it'll be fun. Ooh. What a... You want to build a enigmatic incarnation deck? Enigmatic incarnation can definitely work in in uh, in Pioneer. I think I have seen at some points in the past versions of it in Pioneer. Huh. Now let's sack this to Scry. Okay, sure. Uh, bottom and I guess top. Glass pool mimic. Copy the Renegade Rallier. Not a creature. Get back the Omen. Not being cast. Make a token. Oh, so much value. So much value. Uh, land. Go to combat. Uh, attack, attack. I think our opponent's done. I think they have given up. Attack with a bunch about it. No more tapping. Yeah, watching it go off is definitely sweet. Is Pioneer dead? Pioneer is still on life support. It still definitely has its dedicated fans. And it's still actually in a pretty sweet place. Hey, thank you, Carthidian CG. I, I wouldn't mind doing more tournament casting. Something I want to do that is on my list, and I don't know... Don't get too excited because I'm not sure I'll be able to able to pull it off just with uh, the busyness of spoilers and everything else that's going on. But would you would you play in a goldfish tournament if that was a if that was a possibility? Ooh, congratulations, Doug. That is that is excellent. But would you play in a tournament? Let's say let's say I could pull this off and there was a a goldfish tournament. That was, you know, a normal tournament that maybe uh, I would cast along with someone else. And uh, there would have to be some sort of prizes, of course. I don't know if there would be a way to incentivize fun decks. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Like, so let's say I did pull it off and we were able to do a goldfish tournament. Do you think it would be worth trying to have some some weird requirement to incentivize people to play off meta decks or do you think it would be better just to have a a normal tournament that was essentially sponsored by goldfish and broadcast on the goldfish twitch kind of somewhat similar to what jeff uh, what jeff does how jeff does his tournaments like uh what do you think do you think it'd be worth it to try to do that make a ban list yeah, i mean we could kind of like how uh wizards does the special events they have a a bigger ban list because i think that would be fun and I think players might actually, yeah, ban list is probably the the way to actually do it. Yeah, Hooglandy Open. I think if I if we were gonna try to do it, I think it would probably be less spiky. Like the goal of the Hooglandy Open is obviously to win, and still, like Jeff does an amazing job. It blows me away how well he does doing uh, doing tournaments from his basement. Like it is super super impressive. Uh, but it's very you know people are trying to win. I would like to do a twist on that where. Where there's a ban list that incentivize people not to play like horrible decks, but to but to incentivize people to play not the top tier decks. So I think you could do a, a ban list that would prohibit people from playing the top tier decks, but still 
but still allow people to build uh, to build powerful decks. I don't want people to, you know, I don't want to have a pauper tournament or something. I'm not really, not really trying to go that direction. But I think you could do a do a ban list that would maybe 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 get people to play less top tier decks and more like more brews or more off meta decks. And I think that could be really fun. Like I would definitely be down. I would be down with that. So that's something that long term I'd really like to do. What would the format be? Um, most so I would be most interested in standard around when there's a new set release or historic. I also really love modern, but I don't know if Playpool would be interested in a Moto tournament. That that's the other concern. Well, what do you think about that? What format would you like to see? I would lean towards historic most of the time. Man, the top 10 cards in different categories found in Goldfish. Ooh, that could actually be a pretty... That might actually be a good way to go about it, come to think of it. I think Modern... I mean, I love Modern. Modern is one of my favorite formats, so I would be down with doing Modern. But I feel like it would probably be better as a... As a arena event rather than a Magic Online event. Opponent. Your deck must satisfy the companion requirement. You may not actually use that companion. <laughs> oh, re uh, satisfy the requirement of companion, but you can't play companion. That would actually be a pretty good restriction, too. Oh. Hmm, well. Oh, I don't like letting our opponent draw a card, but we don't really have a choice. Oh, opponent draws a clue. Or cracks a clue, draws two. We'll kill the Esper Sentinel. Back up to 16. Choops Magoops for next turn. But yeah, that's something I've been thinking about that could could potentially happen in the future. Not because I think it'll be like profitable, but because I think it would be really fun and a good way to I don't know, I think it would be a fun community event. I want to do more community stuff, like how we've been talking about. Oh, they know about enchantment creatures. I guess it was too much to hope for another another opponent that <laughs> did not realize enchantment creatures were a thing. Oh, not good, not good, not good. And this is growing. Well, okay. This is a sad meat hook massacre, but I think we gotta do it. The Thraven Inspector lives. But yeah, I think that would be that would be fun. Doing more community stuff, I think, would be super fun. We talked about doing like the movie night thing too, which is another thing that I would like to do. Just as a fun community thing, watching a movie together, so about it. You sure not gonna tutor up some Landorinos. And another meat hook massacre. Yeah, we really needed lands. Now, Omen of the Sea, see if we can find a land into hopefully trial. Alright, those are lands. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe this gives us a shot. We'll play the land. Trial of Ambition. Look at all these enchantments we got. We're just facing down such big creatures. Kill the Thraves opponent adapts. Land and hits us. Really gotta pray for no Cocos. Coco is is super frightening here. About it. Hits us to 10. Can we stabilize after the slow start? About it. Redain, okay. Ranger Captain of Eos not great for us draws as per sentinel okay so how can we win one two so if we kill the redain we can potentially wrath if we draw land all right chupacabra kill redain gain a life overgrown tomb tap that's our hope our hope is drawn the land for the Meat Hook Massacre. Reza, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you, Esper Sentinel. Opponent goes attacking. We got a block because we're about to die. About it. Hits us. Down to eight. Can we draw an untap land and Meat Hook Massacre away this board? Opponent passes. The answer is no. In that case, ugh. Are we dead? Probably. Oh, we can mask our way two creatures. 
You know what? We're gonna play Scarab God. Scarab God. No Cocos. No Cocos! No removal on the Scarab God, or we're super dead. About it. Coco. Yeah, Coco is gonna be a problem no matter what we chose. Oh, okay. Yeah, Coco is gonna be a problem no matter what we chose. Yeah, we just. Oh, land trouble. The land trouble got us good. Well, uh, we will run it back. Run it back. Trust that we we hit some lands this time. If there's a downside of Meat Hook Massacre, it is it is expensive. The way it is formatted, uh, it can be expensive. And missing land drops, whew, not a not ideal. Not ideal with old Meat Hook Massacre. What if you selected a set number of cards to be legal from each set? So I think that there would have to be a balancing act. Because I think part of making the, the tournament... Ooh, I like this hand. This hand is a pretty good one. Um, so I think it would have to be a balancing act because part of what would make the tournament fun is players would have to be able to easily... Yeah, we haven't played any any Thought Distortion decks. We haven't played against any like real control decks. But part of what would be necessary to make the tournament fun is players would have to be able to easily make decks. So my concern is... Making too big of a barrier for brewing if uh, if we went too far with like banning so many cards each set or something like that. I think it's a neat idea, but that would be my concern. Because I know for me, I run into that with like Penny Dreadful, for example. The, the barrier of just like getting into it is so high that what ends up happening is I, I don't even I don't even try to play it because I don't want to put the effort into huh well i guess we can do our cute little line we play the land enigmatic incarnation sag sanctum weaver this is like one of the cutest little lines of the deck get back the renegade rallier that gets back the sanctum weaver and we get down our four mana namesake enchantment now things are looking up we got our lands this game we got incarnation going opponent needs to naturalize or they are going to be in trouble yeah i don't really want to do pauper I don't think Popper would be super, super interesting. Or Peasant. Uh, I think that would be too big of a restriction. I think the best, the best idea I have heard so far that I like the most is, is just to do a, a strict ban list, almost like Wizards does for some of their, their uh, midweek events. So I think that's probably one, two, three, but we're sacking one. So this makes three right now. All right, let's cycle the triome. So I think that's my favorite idea so far. Into another triome. Well, godless shrine. End of turn. Sack the oath of Gaia. Not sure why they brought in rest in peace. Um, get a Gonti. Try to steal some goodies. Take Elite Spellbinder. Pass the turn. About it. Untap. You had a 217, 217 Fractal. That's a card I really want to revisit. I would like to revisit uh, Body of Research. Now that Brazen Borrower is not in the format. I just kind of forgot about it. It is a really spicy card. Aw. Uh, how do we want to do this? Go to combat. Smack ya a bit. About it takes it. Elite Spellbinder. Take a cheese. Um, um. Well, okay. I guess we take a Coco. Opponent's got a pretty solid hand. Well, okay. Another Spellbinder. Take your Coco. How about a taste of your own medicine, humans? <laughs> How do you like us now? <laughs> Sack the Sanctum Weaver. Get a Moonblast Cleric. Get Wow, this deck is really sweet when it goes off. Get a Binding of the Old Gods. Oh! Oh, no goes. <laughs> no goes for uh, our opponent over there. <laughs> opponent. 
Yeah, there's no way your opponent's gonna use six mana. Oh, they drew the they drew the tap land anyway. Thalia, sure. Mm-hmm. Now we will bind it. Kill the Thalia. At some point, our opponents just gotta give up here. Kill the Thalia. I guess they're trying to shut down our Scarab God. Go to combat. Smack ya for a ton. Wait, is our opponent dead? They go to one. Opponent chumps, goes to one. Sure. I mean, they need a they need a miracle. They need a miracle. Play the trio. End of turn. Sag the binding. Binding gets us a. You know what? <laughs> you are not going to draw an answer off that clue about it. It's not happening. Enjoy your golem. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, a little a little flex a little flex ranger grabbed in vios oh 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 here's a card that we haven't talked i forgot this is on the top of my list of cards we need to talk about today we haven't talked about them i need your help chat i need your help uh with this card hang on opponents going to ambitiously attack we will kill it opponent <laughs> oh, gonna be a massacre. It is going to be a massacre. <laughs> Bonus axe will pay the one. Kill them all. And boom. Um, so here's the here's a question. <laughs> What a flex. <laughs> we did a little flexing on that opponent. I will admit, it's because of the Phoenix deck. It's because Phoenix was taking us out. It was just in the in the in the flexing mood a little bit. <laughs> Dude, just send a just send a little, a slight little message. Yeah, opponents rest in peace. Did keep us from draining them, but we're good. We're good. Yeah, I guess if we went too high with the with the Mia, we would have killed ourselves. So here's my question to you, chat. And I need your help with this. How can we combo off with Patchwork Crawler? Patchwork Crawler, two mana, one, two. Zombie Horror, pay three. Exile a creature from your graveyard, put a counter on it. It has all the activated abilities of all the creatures in exile. How can we combo off with this? So I know in older formats, Legacy Modern, please don't be as a Phoenix. Please don't be as a Phoenix. Please don't be as a Phoenix. Um, oh, green, okay. Uh, in older formats, many of the combos that Necrotic Ooze can pull off also work with Patchwork Crawler. So you can do um, Phyrexian Devourer plus Triskillion. You can do uh, something that taps for multiple mana in a untapper like Horseshoe Crab. But in standard, what can we do with this in standard? How can we how can we break this in standard? Osmati uh, or Osmodeus is is probably one of the easiest. Just get the three mana draw seven. That's not really a combo. It's a really sweet, it's a really sweet value play, but it's not really a combo. Is it possible to combo off with this in standard? I've spent the last two days or day digging through standard cards, trying to find a combo, trying to find a combo. I know there are combos in historic that we can play, infinite combos. There's combos in pioneer that are different because they don't have necrotic use that, ooh, slivers. Spicy, spicy slivers. Okay. Uh, well, let's uh take a little, a little chew on the brain. Uh, hmm. Belligerent, belligerent, spiteful. Well, let's take the one our opponent could potentially cast. Pass the turn. So if you have ideas on how to break it, I am I am all about it because I really want to build a deck around it. How about an against the odds tournament where you must pick from a list of against the odds cards and build around it? Ooh. The hard part is I think what that would be enforcing it. Like so what if someone The hard part is the building around it part. So you could make a rule that you gotta play a list of against odds cards and pick one of them and play it but where it gets sticky is in theory and it's something that i kind of try to just avoid on against the odds uh naturally but in theory you could take and put a 
Baron Glory in Modern Jund and hope you draw don't draw Baron Glory. And even if you didn't go to that extreme, you definitely could... Even if you don't go to that extreme, what could be a problem is, did someone build enough around it? it what if their deck is... You know, technically it's got Baron Glory and it's got a combo to win with it, but the rest of it is tier Jeskai control or blue white control. Like, does that count? So that's where it gets that's where it gets sticky is evaluating evaluating if it qualifies essentially. Like, is it is it janky enough? Is a hard a hard judgment to make uh in some scenarios. So I think I'm still leaning towards just the ban list being the best way. Like, just ban ban some of the top tier cards and then let people do whatever they want. I still, yeah, I would like to do, kind of like when we did the band bracket. Yeah, I would also like to do a, a against the odds tournament that style. Well, incarnation time. No attacks. Sag, though, the Gaia. Snag a... I don't really want a sliver. I also really don't want to kill that sliver. Yeah, you know what? We'll take a we'll take a sliver. We'll take a sliver. Gonti away. We'll take a lava belly sliver past the dirt. The great destroyer. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super cheer for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. About it. Looking at our brain maggots. Dragon line number three. Ram Walker. Sure. I think we're in good shape though. Gonna be a, a smidge, just a smidge late for our dear opponent. Uh, Treacherous Blessing. Opponent's starting to have mana troubles. And oh, we won another game. Uh, play the land, play Destiny Spinner. Lose a life, hit you with Gonti. About it. So what we've found so far is this deck has been really good if we're not playing Is It Phoenix. <laughs> that's the that's the TLDR. Is It Phoenix is kind of wrecked us, but in other matchups, the deck has felt insane. How do I enter your historic tournament? So it's not, it's something I would like to do. It's, so, oh boy, Mana Web Sliver. It's something that I would like to do. It is not set up yet. And my challenge is finding the time to do it. If I do manage to do it, it will very likely be through MTG Melee. And I will definitely give you all all the information because you're the, you're the people that I'd want to be playing it. Like that would be the that would be the fun of it is getting to you know broadcast a tournament and see all of your decks and it would be super super fun. So it's more of a long term plan. It's not like happening this month or today or something like that. More of a more of something that I would really like to do. And uh, I will I will have to see if I can find the time to actually to actually pull it off. About it. Oh, giving our opponent back their cards for a turn might have been a mistake. Yeah, whatever. It'll be fine. Spiteful sliver. Get them back. We get... What does this do? Slivers? Oh, okay, we'll take mana web sliver. <laughs> Jeez, opponent is just straight up slivers. Uh, we'll take that. Take first sliver untap oh god uh that's uh that's pretty good we're gonna bind up this spiteful sliver we're gonna go attacking for a ton are you dead not quite mana web sliver uh tap land end of turn sack it get a five drop this time it's i guess cavalier of dawn by default uh blow up a Mana Web Sliver. Pass the turn, and I don't know, our opponent gets out of this. Enigmatic Incarnation Jank, and it's actually kind of working. Does Treacherous Blessing work the way we want it to with Incarnation? It does. Oh no. Flex time? There's no one. One, two. Yeah, flex time. I mean, I can't resist the chance for a Meat Hook Massacre kill. It's just such a funny way to win a game. <laughs> um, yeah, it does. Uh, Enigmatic Incarnation doesn't target. So you are able to sacrifice 
you are able to uh to sacrifice a treacherous blessing because you don't actually target it it just uh you just choose uh you just sacrifice so there's no targeting about with enigmatic incarnation i'm sure this has been addressed but your preview video no the combo of patchwork crawler and clever conjure does work really i haven't really got to see the comments to the preview video how is that possible because the name transfers over I'm super confused. Oh, I explain to me the Great Destroyer. I'm actually very curious because initially I was like, oh, that's going to be cool. Oh, wow. Spoiler video punt. Oh, dear. <laughs> Oh, I thought it was, so when I first saw that, I thought it was so smart. Then I posted about it and everyone, uh, a lot of people were like, no, that doesn't work. So when I thought I was really dumb for thinking that it did work. So I decided to use it as a, as a PSA to, <laughs> to let people know about the name thing, which actually is a real thing, but I probably chose like literally the one example <laughs> In all of magic where <laughs> where it actually doesn't work. What's the point of tapping it to untap it? So the idea would be like, so for example, let's say this is a really, a really in-depth uh, example, but let's say you had the zombie as a clever conjurer, and then you had Masquid Nexus, and then you had Magda, you'd make infinite mana, because you could tap it. Um you could tap it, it would be a dwarf that would make a treasure, then you could untap it, and then you tap it, it would make another treasure again and again and again and again. Uh, yeah, so. So, yeah. <laughs> there are there are situations where that could matter. And if you go to older formats, there's like cards that specifically reference something being untapped. I will. I will make a. Uh, I will make a note in the video once we finish the stream so people are not confused because that one's. That one, uh, that one is on me. But there are other, like, uh, Wake Thrasher gets plus one, plus one whenever something becomes untapped. Or, uh, Mnemonic Orb? Yeah. Is, is it Mnemonic Orb? Is that the, is that the two-man artifact that whenever something gets untapped, uh, mills? So there are reasons. I don't think there's one in standard, at least without the, like, four-piece Magda combo, which is super, super janky. Like, uh, there's not a lot of easy ones. But it's Merrick. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Um, I don't think there's an easy one in standard. But there are ones in other formats where that could actually be relevant. Ooh, that... Predatory sliver is a bit of an issue. Okay. Well, land. Moonblast cleric. Decline past the turn. About it. Bone size sliver. Double strikes. Jeez. Um. Wow. Well, we got to see the, the sliver nutter butters over there. Jeez. Well, that was about the best possible. I mean, slippers can get really explosive draws. I don't know about Bone Slice Sliver. It worked there, though. Oh, that Meog Massacre. Our opponent had that. If our opponent didn't have that Lord, or if we were on the play, our opponent would have just lost their entire board there. Oh, we're going to try this. It's a, not the fastest. Hopefully, we draw some non lands in the early game. Opponent is mulliganing for the nut draw. Yeah, opponent had their insane draw there. About it. Well, Godless Shrine tapped. Pass the turn. Early game plays, please. Yeah, opponent, opponent did the flexing that game. I mean, our opponent couldn't see the flex, but. <laughs> opponent. Land. All right, we can stop drawing lands now, deck. Mana Web Sliver. That's our opponent's best sliver. That's a that's a good one. That is a good one. The Mana Web Sliver is what makes it all possible. What slivers are missing in Historic is redundancy. In older formats, they have, like, multiple Mana Web Slivers. Multiple. You know what? Let's just... 
Eh, let's just get incarnation going. They have multiple mana web slivers. Multiples are their best effects. That's why historic slivers are li uh, missing. They have all the good things. Every every effect that you could want, you pretty much have in historic slivers, but you only get one of them. Compared to older formats, we have to get two of them or three of them. Uh, so that's that's what would improve, I think, the deck the most in historic. Well, this is this is just gonna be a massacre. Not a literal, not a literal meat hook massacre, but a massacre nonetheless. Well, we got to see slivers go off last game, which is sweet, but this game. This game, uh, we are going off a smidge opponent. Passes. I'll smack ya. Sagdom Weaver, play a land. Tag the Sagdom Weaver. Renegade Rallyer, get back the Sagdom Weaver. Pass the turn. Woo! Our deck can go off too, apparently. Opponent, land, and death. Land in death. Scarab God's, Scarab God's busted. Spiteful Sliver. Mm -hmm. That is a good one. Uh, but we would like to take your Mana Web Sliver, please, opponent. Keep the Treacherous Blessing. Draw it. Treacherous Blessing. Draw some cards. Glass Pool Mimic. Clone the Chew. Kill the sliver. Smack you to death. <laughs> that was a good one. Ooh, new spoiler. All right, perfect timing. New spoiler to uh to look at before we finish our stream for today. All right. Ooh, and it's is this a mythic? Is it a rare? Well, there's actually two. We have two new spoilers. All right, two new spoilers, two new spoilers. So first, all right, we're gonna talk about the deck, then we're gonna talk about our new spoilers, then we're gonna raid someone. So uh, so this deck, we ended up going five and four when it was all said and done. The deck is really sweet. I would recommend playing it. However, if you are going to play it, you need to find another plan, a better plan for the Phoenix matchup, because we kind of got spanked by Phoenix uh several times <laughs> we 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 want i think out of our four losses one of them was that punt game when <laughs> when i got distracted and didn't cast the meat hook massacre the other three were to phoenix deck so we just had a really hard time beating phoenix we even lost to it with lane line out so i would say i would say uh the deck is really sweet it's really competitive outside of phoenix add more phoenix hate maybe i don't know graveyard hate maybe more removal i don't know what the best phoenix hate is i'm gonna have to take some brewing to figure it out it would be nice if it worked with the enchantment plan but the deck is sweet it's competitive just have a better plan for phoenix uh, let's take a look at these spoilers we got two new, two new spoilers the first one a random little uncommon screaming wow not little screaming swarm six mana bird horror uh so so richard a richard card four four flying when you attack with one or more creatures target player mills that many cards four mana put screeching swarm from your graveyard into your library second from the top uh all right so bird horror for i guess I guess limited, a limited mill style deck. Uh, it is like pseudo recursive very slowly. Not gonna do anything in Constructed. Also probably unlikely to do anything in Commander. I don't even think Bird Tribal would play it, but I don't know, if you make a bunch of creatures, you can mill a bunch of times. If you're some sort of creature mill hybrid, but just an uncommon, uncommon for limited. We also got, oh boy, a rare zombie, Graft Reaver. So Graft Reaver. Two mana, three, three. Okay, off to a good start. Zombie Warrior, exploit. When it exploits a creature, destroy target Planeswalker. At the beginning of your upkeep, it deals one damage to you. Ooh, ooh, this card's spicy. Is this card good? Uh, what is what is the card that this is? There's, uh, there was like, Sar Scarno Phage? There was a one drop from like way back in Exodus. Then there was a two drop version, which I think was basically this card in Time Spiral. That was a two mana three three. That at the beginning of your upkeep, you take one or you have to sacrifice it. Yeah, there's Carno Phage, but what's the. Is Carno Phage the two drop one? What's the two drop one? Scar Sarno 
is it Sarnophage? I don't know. There's there's a card very much like this. Scragnophage. Thank you, Purple Saurus Rex. But yeah, this is this is a good rate. Like turn one champion of the parish, turn two this, grow your champion of the parish. Like the exploit is not super relevant, although it is cute because if you're playing an exploit deck, if you get low on life, you can always sacrifice this later in the game to get rid of it. So I feel like I feel like this is a card that is going to be really big for zombies in standard. Champion of the Parish, this, Girl Champion of the Parish, five power on turn two, follow it up with whatever, use uh, exploit to sacrifice it later in the game if necessary. This is a two drop that I think zombies really needed to be more competitive in the format. Uh, that's one of the things I wanted. That's one of the things I wanted. That's one of the things I asked for when we were talking about what we wanted going into this, stuff to make the other tribes playable. That was at the top of my list. And I, I think we're getting it. I think we're actually getting it so pretty excited for this card pretty excited for zombies uh doesn't do anything too much with the zombie panner monocon but uh but still but still it uh it does do it does do something so anyway whoa those are our spoilers i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to scurry over to the youtube and make a note about that spoiler spoiler video punt so i didn't confuse anyone but i think that brings us to the end of our stream for today we got to look at spoilers we got to play some historic we'll be back on thursday thursday's our second stream this week so we'll be back thursday to have some more fun to talk some more spoilers we should have most of the set by then so in the meantime uh replay youtube oh in the spoiler video today i i talked about an interaction between between the, the the zombie that steals activated abilities in clever conjurer not working when it actually does work so i just wanted to make a make a note of it so i didn't uh didn't confuse anyone in the spoiler video with my with my mistake so uh read my youtube if you missed anything that's where you'd find the old stream normal youtube check out the spoiler videos check out everything else and one more shout out to our sponsor tonight card kingdom if you need some magical cards you can get them over at cardkingdom.com even get a free empty the old fish sticker let them know you want one most importantly thank Thank you to all of you for hanging out this fine Thursday afternoon. Seriously, I appreciate y'all so much. Uh, seriously, I love y'all. Have a great night. Have a great Wednesday. I'll see you on Thursday. Enjoy the spoilers. Check out tomorrow's Against Odds. It's some historic jank. It's pretty spicy. So until then, everyone, have a great night, and I will talk to you soon.